want to do tonight is get into <clears throat> uh, tonight's episode. And we're going to do is we're going to talk Jeffrey Dahmer. 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 My, my Boston accent. My Dahmer. But let's do this. Let's give a little bit of a background on who Jeffrey Dama is, if people don't know. Jeffrey Dama, 1960 to 1994, was an American serial killer and sex offender, also known as the Milwaukee Cannibal. Dama was responsible for the murders of 17 men and boys between 1978 and 1991. Most recent... Uh, you know, movie Netflix series. They had that Netflix series uh, of Dama. I'll be honest with you. I tried watching like a couple of ex episodes of it and I just, I couldn't get into it. it just wasn't for me. Uh, but most of whom he lured into his home were uh, where he drugged, where he drag, drugged and strangled them. After killing the victims, Dama would also dismember the bodies and keep parts as trophies. He also engaged in necrophilia and cannibalism. If you want to look up necrophilia, Go for it. I'm not going to explain it here. <laughs> Dama was eventually arrested in 1991, and after one of his intended victims managed to escape and alert police, he was sentenced to life in prison in 1992, but was beaten to death by another inmate in 1994. What I'm going to talk about this evening is uh, Detective Patrick Kennedy, and I'm not sure if you guys know about this, but he was actually a very key pivotal player in the investigation. He spent a significant time with Dama and actually got Dahmer to confess. He was the one that actually got the confession out of him. So um, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of background on Patrick Kennedy. Patrick Kennedy was a former Milwaukee police officer. Uh, police officer homicide detective, and he spent several months engulfed in Jeffrey Dahmer's serial killer case that made headlines around the world in July in 1991. Because of, an in, because of the instant rapport he established with Jeffrey, he was able to draw a confession from a man who had murdered 17 young men. After spending several more years as a detective, he returned to college and went to teach criminal justice uh, at two Wisconsin universities. He was featured in, an, in a documentary film, the, the Jeffrey Dahmer Files, in 2012. And sadly, Patrick Kennedy passed away in April of 2013. But, you know, though he passed away, it's really good that he got out to, um, he got out to uh, tell his story and tell the story of his perspective of Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, and if you have ever heard Pat talk before, he's a very, very good storyteller, very, very engaging. I'm very excited to play this audio tonight. It's not a video. Um, it's not a video um, show that he was on. It was a, it was a radio show back in, in 2012. It was uh, Opie and Anthony. And um, it's about a 40 minute segment and is brilliant. And I, I think you guys are going to really enjoy that. And then I want to do as we top off the rest of the night is I'm actually going to play courtroom footage of Patrick in the 91 trial, um, giving his uh, testimony. We're probably going to play some of the victim impact statements and then also Jeffrey Dahmer's sentencing. So that will be all from his trial, all real footage. If you haven't seen that, I think you're going to really enjoy that tonight. So let's do this first. I have a kind of a, a, a segment from Inside Edition that they did back after Jeffrey was sent to prison, and it kind of recaps everything that uh, we got into from the real life perspective, not from like a Netflix series. So let me bring that up. I'm getting very nasally at the moment. I have no idea why. So please <laughs> deal with me there on that. But um, if I so happen, and I'm just gonna let everybody know, if I so ads on YouTube must to get shut down because I'm playing this inside edition scoop or any of these courtroom clips, I will restart the stream. Just bear with me. You'll see it post up. Just go into that stream. I don't know what's going to happen. I know like when I play Joe Rogan stuff, for some reason, I get booted off. Um, but let's do this. O'Brien says, it was just too heavy for me by the time I got to the second episode. You talk about the Netflix series. I just, I couldn't get into it. I really tried. I watched like three or four of them and I just, I couldn't get into it. So the way that it happens is if you are streaming content that's copyright protected, 
supposedly what happens is Netflix, will, I mean, Netflix, I'm thinking Netflix, who's talking Netflix. Um, YouTube will shut me down and then it's supposed to come back up as if that content is shut down. Uh, the, the algorithm kind of triggers it, triggers it and realizes it, but it really never does. So uh, if it ends up getting bounced out, uh, I will uh, re restart the, the stream. Must be so annoying. But with three clicks, you can install an ad blocker and you'll never see ads again. It's decent. You do Idaho content, you get 200 people watching. You do Jeffrey Dahmer content, you get 23 people watching. Sensitize myself to it. I, I evening I, uh, gift card. So I don't know. I went to great lengths. He is pure evil, but you'd never know it by looking at him. But when you hear him, that's another story. His killing field was Milwaukee, and he got away with murder for more than a decade. But how could any of this happen? For the first time ever, Nancy Glass is here inside the world of Jeffrey Dahmer. Bill, when I sat down opposite Jeffrey Dahmer for this interview, I wondered what he would tell me, how hard it would be to get him to discuss his horrific crimes. What I found was that he was very forthcoming. He volunteered details that may be difficult to hear. I began by asking what he wanted from the men he picked up. I had uh, these obsessive uh, desires and, and uh, thoughts wanting to control them to, uh, I don't know how to put it, uh, possess them permanently. And that's why you killed them. Right. Right. Not because I was angry with them, not because I hated them, but because I wanted to keep them with me. And uh, as my obsession grew, uh, I was saving body parts such as uh, skulls and uh, skeletons. Jeffrey Dahmer is recalling his monstrous past. <laughs> Almost two years ago in this little apartment in Milwaukee, police discovered the grisly remnants of one of the most horrible crime sprees in American history. Jeffrey Dahmer. I remember that footage. I remember seeing that footage of them wheeling out the freezer back in, in 91. I remember that. I vividly remember that footage. That was all over the news back then. An unassuming chocolate factory worker would eventually confess that he had seduced, murdered, and dismembered 17 young men. <clears throat> he even ate some of his victims' body parts. <laughs> he instantly became the center Look of at reporters back then. Media. Look how primitive everything was back then. It's crazy. And to think now, I mean, that guy was typing on a typewriter. <laughs> it's crazy. I feel like it was yesterday. It's so yeah, funny. Attention. A serial killer unmasked. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate you. There were protests and press conferences in Milwaukee as people tried to understand how this could have happened in their midst. Good point. How did Jeffrey Dahmer get away with murder after murder for 13 years? How did a boy born into a hardworking middle class family turn into the worst kind of monster imaginable? In this exclusive interview, we put those questions to Jeffrey Dahmer himself. We met with him at the maximum security prison where he is serving his sentence of 999 years. For the first time, he I, I talks any, about his I'm crimes not. and gives us a chilling look inside the mind of a serial killer. It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Uh, when you uh, depersonalize another person and view them as just an object, uh, an object for pleasure instead of a, a living, breathing human being, uh, it, it seems to make it easier to uh, do things you shouldn't do. The reason why Jeffrey Dahmer was able to get away with his crimes was because of just what you are seeing here. Jeffrey Dahmer is intelligent and articulate. That is what makes him so frightening. But if you listen carefully to his words throughout this interview, you realize it is a thin disguise. You do sound, though, like the kind of person who could have said to himself, this is wrong. I must stop. I always knew that, that it was wrong, but uh, uh, after the, the first, the first yeah, I believe uh, they killing did. was not planned. Yeah, I believe they I did. I was... Uh, coming back from the shopping mall back in 78. I know they were. I'd had uh, 
fantasies about picking up a, a hitchhiker and uh, taking him back to the house and uh, having complete control and dominance over him. The hitchhiker's name was Stephen Hicks. He was just 18. Jeffrey Don I want to welcome in all the new people that are just coming in right here. Make sure to upvote. If we get 50, 50 likes tonight, I'm going to give away a Target gift card. If we get to 100 likes, I'll give away another Target gift Mark card. Mark took him to his parents' house. It's there going to be an interactive game the way I do it. So. He dismembered the body and hid it in a drain pipe. It was Jeffrey Dahmer who gave those details to the police in his confession. No one, no one had a clue as to what was happening for, for over a decade. During that time, Jeffrey Dahmer joined the army and was sent to Germany. He was eventually discharged for a drinking problem and returned to Ohio. Nine years after Stephen Hicks' murder, the killing began again. What happened to you in the nine years in between that you were able to stop, that you were able to control yourself? It just wasn't an opportunity to uh, fully express what I wanted to do to do <clears throat> there's just not the, op the physical opportunity to do it then and uh, i started when i moved to milwaukee in 81 uh, i started reading pornography going to the bookstores um, eventually that led to uh, frequenting the gay bars and then i one time I brought this uh, young man back to the hotel room, the Ambassador Hotel, uh, was just planning on drugging him and uh, spending the night with him. Had no intention of hurting him. When well, Boomer, you might morning, be able to win. He, uh, Make sure you up vote. You gotta get to 50 likes this evening. Bruised. Apparently I had uh, beaten him to death with my fists. And you have no memory I of it? I have no memory of it. But that's what started the whole spree all over again. Dahmer says he snuck the corpse of his victim, Stephen Toomey, out of his hotel room in a suitcase. Then he took it to his grandmother's house, where he cut up the body and put it in plastic yeah. garbage bags. When you killed this man, exactly. afterwards, <laughs> were you repulsed? Were you upset? No, it, at the time, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was almost addictive. It was almost... Uh, a surge of energy. Uh, I wouldn't have to uh, uh, worry Thank you, about Terry. Um, no any problem. of their needs or anything. I just had complete control of the situation. But Jeffrey Dahmer was out of control. The urge to kill had overpowered him. As police later learned, he wasn't satisfied with his victim's death. He wanted more. Why did you photograph them? It was my way of remembering... Uh, their appearance, their physical beauty. Uh, I also wanted to keep something. If I could, hey Christine, keep them how are you? They're with me whole. Good to see you. I, at least I felt that I could keep uh, their skeletons. No problem, and, Amber. Uh, I even went so far as planning on uh, setting up an altar with uh, the. Uh, 10 different uh, skulls and skeletons. And what was the purpose of the altar going to be? Uh, as a sort of uh, memorial, uh, a, a point where I could, I don't know. Yeah, it's, an it's, altar. It's so bizarre and strange, it's hard to describe. A place where I could collect my thoughts uh, and feed my obsession. When the bodies were still in your apartment, there was no time when you would see them and say, this is grotesque. Look at the hairstyles in 93. <laughs> it's crazy. What have I done? It's so There bad. were times. There were times. But the compulsive obsession with uh, doing what I was doing overpowered any feelings of revulsion. This man with a quiet, almost shy demeanor became a master well, manipulator welcome, Terry. who was we appreciate able to you lure being strangers here. he met at gay bars to his apartment. He was even able to con the police into returning a 14-year-old boy to him after neighbors called 911 upset that the child was in the street <laughs> naked and bleeding. Dahmer convinced the police that he and the boy were simply having a lover's quarrel. It's a intoxicated uh, boyfriend of another boyfriend. 
Well, how old was this child? It wasn't a child, it was an adult. After the police left, Jeffrey Dahmer murdered that boy. You know, here's the thing, and, and Amber's bringing up a good point. She says, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm more of a Ted Bundy than a Dahmer. I'm more into Ted Bundy than Dahmer. So this is all very interesting to me, and I'm so glad that you did this tonight, Brian. I think it's a great show. And the thing, like I, I explained before, is that, you know, there are going to be people, obviously, that just come here for Idaho content. But I have to do regular shows. I'm, I'm a live streamer, so I can't do Idaho three nights a week. It just it's not going to work because when that case and if that case ever gets settled, where do you go from there? And that's why I, you know, I, I'm I'm kind of giving a tip to my my compadre uh, YouTubers. You know, you got to start coming up with other content and putting on, sh you know, a show if you're going to be a live streamer. Because once once Idaho is done and it's settled and it goes either way, what are you going to do? You have to talk about other content. So, you know, I'm just being honest with everybody. This channel will not all be Idaho. It will. It, it's never going to always be all Idaho. I know, like, that's a big thing right now. Uh, ha we have a lot of curiosity around it, but I can't do three, four, five nights a week of Idaho. My brain will be burned out. Um, and you got to get off it a little while. So, um, I appreciate all of you because you all in this chat tonight care about me, uh, and care about being here. And, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's interesting. And that's why I want people to get used to this because it's not going to be all Idaho. You have to do other material for your show. I want this show to turn into a show. You know, I want it to grow. I want it to be bigger. I want this channel to be bigger. We have to talk about different things here. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've been looking into Stephen Smith. I see your, your chat there. Um, I want to do a show on that as well. That's probably going to be next uh next week but you know it, it's the thing is i just want to be honest with everybody that you i can't build this whole channel around idaho because you know it's just it's not going to work you know where do you go from there so you have to easier i i guess i'm 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 what am i doing tonight i guess i'm uh this is the self-talk that i have with myself and i'm just being honest with all of you you know you can't do, I, I have to get this audience wrapped around that this is, these are going to be shows. There's going to be different topics. So we're going to talk about different things. And if people choose to watch the live streams, they will. If they don't, then they don't. But, you know, you'll see it. I find it just, you know, tonight we got 25 peak and I bitch on Thursday when I go back to Idaho, there'll be 200 in here. <laughs> if I brought subconscious mouth back, they'd probably be 500. So, uh, you know, I, I'm just being honest with everybody. I'm just being honest. You know, it's it's a show. We have to put on different things. So, boy, <sighs> Conorak sent us some phone. This man says he had a near fatal encounter with Jeffrey Dahmer. You want to take some picture of my back? He hit me with a rubber hammer on my neck. He was lucky to escape because by then the killing had become almost. Yes, routine. sir. It has been since the beginning of the year. The channel the is growing, my friend. Was there any kind of ritual you went through? I go to the nightclubs, uh, drink, watch the uh, the strip tea shows, and uh, if I didn't meet anyone <laughs> no at the brain. bars, I'd uh, go to the bath clubs and uh, meet meet someone there offer them money and we'd go back yeah 100 percent. you know if i would have done Dahmer during the netflix series it probably would have had people here you know but it, you, you can't just base your youtube channel around one subject you, you can't do it because when that when that case settles in court you know what, what are you going to do next you know so you have to branch out and try different material um but we're going to do some Steve Smith stuff. Idaho will be back on Thursday. I got a show wrapped around that. So I'll drop the um, the link after the chat. And I'll tell you, people, there'll be 200 people in here on Thursday. <laughs> you guys know how it is. But let's get through this. We're going to have uh, a good show drinks, tonight. I'd have the... Uh, the uh, they did do a good... Mixture yeah, already they did do a, a, a good job. person would drink it, fall asleep, 
and uh, oh, it's no problem, Christine. Don't worry about it. Strangled. Watching the movie Exorcist Three was also part of his ritual. It put him in the mood for murder. How strange was that? That that uh, he watched Exorcist Three. It's just bizarre. I felt really so into that. Hopelessly, uh, evil and perverted. That. Uh, that I, I actually derives a sort of pleasure from watching that tape. Did you like feeling evil? No, no, I didn't. But uh, I tried to overcome the thoughts. Yeah, and he did. it worked for a while, but eventually I gave in. While Jeffrey Dahmer and, may uh, say things today that make it seem like he understands what went on in his mind, he does not. All he can do is tell you what happened, but he cannot stop whatever it is that drove him to kill in the first place. Do you still feel those same urges? Do you still feel that compulsion, that obsession? <laughs> uh, I wish I could say that uh, it just left completely, but uh, no, there are times when I still do, still do have uh, the old compulsions. Jeffrey Dahmer says as time went on, his mind became more and more warped, and yet he was clever enough to continue to elude police and lure young men to his apartment. We should warn you, the details are very All right, we got a trigger warning here. I started here. having these obsessive thoughts uh, when I was about uh, 15 and 16, and they got worse and worse. What were your fantasies about? Uh, they were sexual fantasies of control, power. Uh, complete dominance, uh, they became reality. Was there pleasure so? in that fantasy? There was excitement, uh, fear, pleasure, all mixed together. Jeffrey Dahmer fulfilled his fantasies by murdering and dismembering 17 young men. In time, his desires became more extreme, his deeds more grotesque. Listen to him talk about the most unnatural things in the most matter-of-fact of ways. That's when you realize that none of it has touched him. I was uh, branching out. That's when the cannibalism started, eating of the heart and uh, the arm muscle. It was a way of uh, making me feel that uh, they were a part of me. It, it, for, at first, it yes. was just curiosity, and then it became... His father stood by him. His father... There's actually another interview out there where they had his father and him together, and they do kind of a joint uh, interview when Jeffrey was in prison. Uh, maybe we can Compulsive. bring that up sometime and then watch it. I tried it. to... Uh, Keeps a person alive by inducing a zombie-like state. Um, yeah, it's crazy. By uh, injecting uh, first a uh, dilute acid solution into their brain or uh, hot water. Jeez. And uh, it never did completely work. Could someone like you be stopped? Could you be helped? No, I, I was... I was dead set on, on going with this compulsion. It was the only thing that gave me any, uh, any satisfaction. He became so warped by his evil impulses that he even took a victim's head with him to work at the Ambrosia chocolate wow. factory. I kept the, uh, the mummified uh, head and skull of one of the victims in uh, a, a carrying case in my locker at work. Were you almost flaunting it? Yes, but that's how strong the compulsion was. That's how bizarre the, the desire was. I wanted to keep something of, of the person with me. Jeffrey Dunn. It's crazy how calm he is talking about all this. It's insane. Mar exhibited some disturbing behavior early on. He began drinking heavily as a teenager, dropped out of college, Absolutely, was arrested Dr. Bob. for indecent exposure, disorderly conduct, and fondling a 13-year-old boy. Ugh. Tragically, one of his murder victims would be that boy's brother. Do you know what started it? Was there any kind of incident that you can remember? To this day, I don't know what started it. And uh, the person to blame is sitting right across from you. That's the only person. Not uh, parents, not society, not pornography. I mean, those are just excuses. 
His macabre 13-year crime spree finally ended when this man, Tracy Edwards, brought the police to the infamous apartment. Like the others, he had gone there with the promise of money. He was listening to my heart because at a point he told me he was going to eat my heart at that point. I hit him and I, and I ran. What was he is still alive. He's 86 years old. He's still alive. Dama's father is still alive. He's 86 years old. The turning point for you that made you suddenly realize that you had done something terribly wrong, something you should be sorry for. It was uh, the night of the arrest. I have Boomer, the way that you can promote this channel and get it to grow is make sure come in and jo join the live streams Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday nights at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then anytime I drop a video to go on and interact with that video, that will help push this on. This channel has grown tremendously over the last two and a half weeks. And it, I thank all of you for being here. That's that's the way we got to do it. We work together. We'll get happened, this channel out there. Thank you. Uh, during the six hours Ooh, excuse me. before uh, the last victim ran out of the apartment, I heard a knock on the door and the police were there uh, with with the last victim. Thank you. Uh, they asked me where the key was to the handcuffs. And I was just my, to let everybody know we had 30 people watching. Once we get to 50 likes tonight, 50 likes, I'm going to do a giveaway for a Target gift card. If we get to 100 likes tonight, I'm going to give another one away. Um, and it's going to be an interactive game. So uh, it's going to be really fun. So my mind was in a haze. I sort of pointed to the bedroom and that's Thank you. where they uh, found the pictures and they, they yelled, cuff them. And I was handcuffed and, uh, it, it was just and you're going to hear Patrick Kennedy he, when we when I play the audio next he is the arresting officer that went to Dama's apartment and he's going to tell the whole story how, what led him there and what happened and I'm telling you you're going to really love the 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 segment that he gives it's it's a his storytelling is so compelling the realization <clears> that <throat> there was no point in trying to hide, well, we'll play a game. hide uh, my actions anymore. The, the best route was to help help the police identify all the victims and just uh, make a complete confession. When it was revealed that most of the victims were black or homosexual, people in Milwaukee were incensed. Many felt that was why he went after them and why the police didn't seem to care when their families reported them missing. 10 of your 17 victims were black. Okay. Were they racially motivated? It, it was crimes? not racially motivated. It was not a sexual preference. It was just to find an obsession with uh, the best looking young man I could find. Well, yep, you that's just right. heard him say that his sexual you're gonna preference hear all had about nothing that. to do with the killings. No, he has not no, come to terms I'm with his really homosexuality. Really. Never understood it. There was no use trying to fight it because I, I couldn't rid myself of it. It was. It was too powerful and persistent. Do you dislike it? Yes, it's caused a lot of problems for me. A lot of conflicts and uh, unanswered questions. The conflicts remain with him, and so do his compulsions. But in prison, they did drop he the finally book. cannot act on his savage 100%. desires. If you were out on the street now, would you still be committing the crimes? Probably. If this hadn't happened, there's no doubt I probably would be. It's like, okay. I can't think of anything that would have stopped me. All right. That is kind of just to catch everybody up to speed to, you know, what was the overall factor in the case, how they caught him. Uh, so I just want to give a little bit of a, a background in that. What we'll do now is we're going to play the segment from the Opie and Anthony show. This is with Detective Patrick Kennedy. They were out actually doing a media tour because he was in the film documentary, The Dahmer, um, the Dahmer Files, that came out in 2013. And um, I encourage everybody, if you haven't seen that, I've watched it. It's really good. Um, and it's more of a documentary type of movie, but Pat was out with the director of that movie. And it doesn't, I think his name was Christopher Thompson. I think he was the, the director of the movie. They were doing a media tour and stopped by at the time when Opie and Anthony were on uh, satellite radio still, and they had their show came by and did like a 40 minute spot with them. And I cannot wait 
to play this because it is so compelling and Pat, Pat was such a great storyteller. I think you guys are all going to really enjoy that. But before I get over there, if ha if anybody hasn't already, smash that like button, please. And once we get to 50 likes tonight, I'm going to give away one of these Target gift cards. And if we get to 100, I'm going to give away another Target gift card. And we're going to play an interactive game with all of you to uh, so I can pick the winner. Um, but let's uh, let's pull up that segment and play through, <clears throat> excuse me. So this is audio, it's not video, I do apologize, but we can sit back and listen here. James Thompson. Yes. I think Chris did the documentary, but Patrick was the uh, detective that actually, uh, after Dahmer was uh, arrested, he actually sat with Dahmer and, and I believe got the confession and really, really spoke to him uh, extensively. Okay. Before he was, you know, uh, known by everyone. So he actually, you know, it's very, very interesting to hear him talk. Right. You could just tell who the cop is by the name. <laughs> yeah. Detective Patrick Kennedy. Yeah. yeah. You know, nice he Irish sounds like guy. a cop, right? Who's nice Irish it? cop. Who got the who got the confession? Pat Kennedy. Pat right. Kennedy did. Pat. Pat oh, did. Hey, Kennedy got it again. Yeah. <laughs> of yeah. Course. Pat Kennedy don't fuck around. <laughs> yeah, but he, it was really, really interesting to hear him uh, discuss this. Good. You know, relationship with Donald. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk to them next. Might have. They're going to talk about that. They're going to talk about that. Wait, this is a really great interview. I think you're going to love Run it. Run out of time for today because we have a Scott and Todd song parody we, we were going to do today. And we'll just mention it. Dan Marino has a love child. What? Well, I'm going to speed up what? to when Pat yeah. comes in. Love the second. What's the theme? Yeah, this is the documentary nice. film made. All right. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Uh, yeah, there's no question oh, who we, the cop is. We can figure out which one is the cop and which one is the documentary yeah, filmmaker. Nice. <laughs> oh, retired, retired. retired detective. Yeah. Retired. Thank you for your service. Yes. He still carries a gun. Hi Indeed. guys. Just these pipes. Wow, oh. look at that, gentlemen. Look at that mustache. I know that. How long have you had the mustache? Fifty-nine years. Yeah, you're one of those uh, guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're one of those guys refuses to shave. I've shaved it a couple times while my wife. Are we on the? Oh yeah, 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 yeah we are. Isn't that amazing? We just. Start the show. Yeah, like we'll that. we'll do I all the other stuff in a minute. My wife wanted to feel like she was with somebody else. <laughs> oh, there you go. He's gonna talk <laughs> shit about his wife, but he had to ask you guys. And then he's like, anyway. Yeah, we only here. Wait a minute. That is that, that would fit in great. Also, uh, during the gritty seventies uh, and eighties, right? Something like that, right? Very impressive. Yes, that's a big must. That might be the biggest great, mustache hey, I've like ever seen. I saw the movie. Um, yeah, was down at South by Southwest. I didn't watch it. And right. It was on like a fifty foot screen. Oh wow. So that's you know what it's like to hear yourself. Or to he, see yourself. Yeah, we love that's it. All of a sudden, I see love like voices. this fifty-foot mustache. <laughs> yeah, that's a I'm lot. I'm gonna go of... home and trim my mustache. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, it's a good look for you. It works. Man. It You're works. Big, big giant of a guy too. Fuck. How yeah. tall are you? I used to be six seven and a half, but after my knee operation, I think I'm only six seven. All right, let's do this. We got thirty-two people watching. If we can get thirty likes in here right now. I will give away one of these Target gift cards. I'm gonna give away a free gift card if you just get to thirty likes. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, nice. Lost a little bit. You don't realize that Too when you're watching guys out of like, Milwaukee. Oh Jesus! No, you're right. <laughs> guys sit, uh, sitting there being interviewed. Like I, I watched the uh, the documentary. It's like you don't realize. Like you're a big imposing yeah. figure. Boy, um, you must have had a ball before these cameras and everything that <laughs> law enforcement has to deal with now. Oh boy, I bet you what? could tell a, a spin a yarn or two. <laughs> we we know some of the old school guys. So. Oh, I love talking. So you don't to have to say school. anything. We know. Old we know you've seen. We got 30 likes. We got 30 likes. So as promised, I said I would give away one of these Target gift cards. So now I have to make it very clear to everybody out there. The only way I can give this to you is I have to mail it to you. So you have to be able to give me your mailing address. Okay. I don't want anybody to participate if you don't want to give me your mailing address. Um, the way that's going to work is I'm going to use a deck of cards. I have a large deck. I'm going to pull one of the cards and put it on my desk right here in view. It'll be your job in the chat to throw out what you think the, the suit is and the number, okay? And once I get the first person that does it in the chat, they will win. If you do not want to give me your address, do not participate because I have to mail this to you. And then the way that we're gonna verify it is, uh, you will have to email me and I will have you do something to verify who you are. Okay. So let's do this. Let me take the cards out. There's 52 cards in the deck. I think I get all the jokers out of there. Jokers are going to be out. No jokers. 
No jokers. No jokers. Jokers are out. All right. Let me just kind of shuffle these up a little bit. And then when I say go, you guys can start picking. All right. I'm going to take this card out here. I'm not going to show it to the screen. I'm going to hold it here. Deck of cards are here. All right. Ready? Whoever wants to participate, go. <clears throat> Start throwing your suits out there. And I'll watch the chat. Keep going. It's not there yet. It's not there yet. <laughs> not there yet. <laughs> nope, no winner yet. <laughs> it's the full house. That's funny. Oh, stop. Stop, 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 stop. We got a winner. We got a winner. We got a winner. Stop, 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 stop. We got a winner. Let me just verify. Let me verify. Okay, we have a winner. And the winner is Army Mom of Two. It was the Ace of Hearts. Congratulations. You won a $10 Target gift card. And uh, let's give her a round of applause there. Congratulations. So what you need to do is, oh, I need to stop sharing. <laughs> what you need to do is I'm going to have you email me. I'm going to drop my email address in the chat. Claim your prize. I'm going to do another one tonight, guys. If we can get to, we'll do 50 likes tonight. If we get to 50 likes, I'll give away another one. So there's my email address, theopinionatedidiot at gmail.com. Uh, mom, what was it? Mom, army of two. Just email me. Let me know. Put in the subject line, uh, I won. And then I'll just have you do something to confirm that it is you and, um, and then I'll get the, the gift card out to you. So congratulations. And yes, thank you for your service. I do appreciate that. We do appreciate everything. So congratulations on that. Let's go back. That was fun, right, guys? That was fun. And uh, we'll go back to, and I have more gift cards to give out this week. So um, we'll uh, go back to the audio here. Yeah. Yeah. People are missing out. Some of the stuff that might have been. Everybody that's not watching tonight's missing out. No, uh, not quite on the books. You learn that from uh, the streets. Yeah, sometimes, you know what? You don't even have to take the perp back to the station house. <laughs> ah, you just deal with them. A little street justice. A little uh, wood shampoo, they call it, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you get more with the uh, honey than vinegar. But yeah, All a lot right. of times you let the guy go because they were useful to you later on. There you go. Exactly. God, I love the old school guys. God, they, you... they had to play it. They, they knew how to play in the streets, oh, yeah. huh? Wow. Yeah. How did you uh, stumble onto becoming a, a part of the the Dahmer case? Like you were just a, you were just a, a regular working detective, right? The way they run it in Milwaukee is uh, they just have the homicide units, and the next step up that you get it. So mm. I walked in. I was on <clears throat> shift. I walked in that morning. Uh, just is that what robot. they call it? The next step up. Well, the next, <laughs> next, next, we used to have a, a saying in Milwaukee that our day begins when yours ends. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's blue humor. It's blue humor. humor. Ah, I can... Phone lines are open 774 855 9400 if anybody wants to call, talk, talk about Dahmer, talk about anything. Just want to pick up, give me a call. See that on a t shirt. You can sell some t shirts with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. But in oh, Milwaukee, it was. Um, it's just the next unit that was up and right. my unit was up. I just walked in and uh, as, before I could even get to my desk, uh, about 10 to 12 at midnight, uh, the Lieutenant called me over and said, I got a couple of excited cops on the phone that wow. said they, uh, they got a head in the refrigerator. Jesus. Wow. And he didn't even really believe it. Uh, this guy was Lieutenant, uh, Roosevelt Harrell. <laughs> he was the highest ranking black, uh, officer on the department at the time, uh, Milwaukee had gone through a lot of racial problems mm -hmm. with uh, the police department. T totally an excellent guy, though. Um, and he said, it sounds like bullshit to me, Pat, but go check it out. 
So sure. on the way up there, I was with this young Polish kid from the South Side, Mike Dubas, uh, and we were making jokes. And I was like, not lose our head over this investigation. Uh -huh. and <laughs> it was, you know, it just seemed so weird. Uh -huh. Had you met Tom at this point yet or no? No, never no. met him before. I, I, and I want to ask just because you look like a young guy. How young were you back then? 20 years ago, I was 38 years old. Wow. So I was huh. young. I was a lot younger. Yeah. I'll be 59 next Next month. So, so you were on the job for a while by the time you oh, yeah, yeah. I walked the beat for several years and hacked the squad uh, for about nine years. Uh, Saving the world, full of piss and vinegar. Well, I was married with three <laughs> kids. I was trying to raise a family. Oh, okay. <laughs> or that. And it was a solid <laughs> job <laughs> with benefits. Uh, All right, or that. Whatever. <laughs> Health insurance. You know. <laughs> I get you. Stability. Did you uh, see Q&A with Nick Nolte? I did. Oh, it's, I feel like I I'm did. sitting next to Mike Brennan. It makes me so <laughs> happy. <laughs> Big guy with a mustache, old yeah. school. So you're making the jokes on the way over. We we know you cops like to make jokes because it's you know it is uh, lightens up the mood a little bit. Personnel. The I'll, I'll turn it off because um, the only reason I had it on was when I do Idaho. There's like 200 people in here, and the chat goes too fast. Um, I'll take care of that. Hang on. And uh, there's not that many people here tonight, so <laughs> I can turn that off. It's just hard sometimes when. Um, we do that with Idaho. It's just really, really tough. All right, slow mode is off, guys. If it fills up, maybe we'll we'll bounce that back up. But okay, we'll keep playing through here. Two are like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got it. But it was a very hot, sticky night. I know it gets hot here too, but it gets real <clears> muggy in Milwaukee <throat> mm -hmm. too. And it was one of those nights where it didn't drop below like eighty-five and. 100 humidity and the foyer of this building is a big glass enclosed foyer and as soon as you walked in there you you could smell the dead body. wow and most and i looked at mike i said wow maybe this ain't gonna be bullshit <laughs> because, uh, and uh actually i took off my coat then because um certain fibrous coats uh, if you're around real dead body it, it'll seep seep into the to the it's like chinese food or what? something where you yeah, smell it when so, you leave the restaurant Jesus. was he uh were there other people living in that structure oh yeah it was a three-story 36 unit rectangular the building with people yeah, that's why i asked they did what well actually several people had complained uh about the smell? over the months about the smell and to the building <sighs> super who i talked to and uh when he went to talk to jeffrey Dahmer about it he had a 55 gallon uh fish tank uh and he told him that he went to chicago for the weekend and the power went out in his fish tank and all his fish died and he left them around there and that's what was causing the smell and he actually sh showed him the plastic garbage barrel that he was using wow. to emulsify people with the muriatic acid and the guy said well just get rid he said that's where i put all the fish and he said well, just get rid of that oh my God. <laughs> so and actually the night we went in there um very clearly displayed were all kinds of solvents cleaners air fresheners uh, the 57 gallon uh, a tank that he had the four bodies in he had by a window in his bedroom with a fan behind it blowing wow. the wow man so, this is some wow. calculated stuff oh yeah he said that he the smell was always a problem that that was what he said just couldn't that. get rid of that fucking but, stench oh. but how were you guys tipped off that there were uh, heads in, in in this place at this point uh, well what had happened is mm. um his last victim uh he had run out of the Halcyon tablets and right. uh, Jeffrey Dahmer was an alcoholic. He was always gassed, always gassed. Mm. And he thought he could drink this guy under the table. And he said, they put down a bottle of 151 rum. They were both gassed. And he had offered this guy $150 to come home for oral sex and to watch uh, movies and to take some, some uh, photographs of him, mm -hmm. which he was, let's not forget that everybody who went to his apartment went there willingly right right he didn't drag nobody there he offered mostly offered them money for sex and photographs well he had taken a couple of photographs of this guy in his whitey tighties and then he wanted to get a a, a bondage shot of him mm. he got the one handcuff on him but when he tried to put the other handcuff on it i talked to the guy I said it just didn't seem right mm. and i told him no i don't want to do that and jeff's thought to me was that he had ran out of the house on tablet so he thought he'd get this guy drunk and once he got him handcuffed then he could just right, what's right. a halcyon tablet halcyon was a very strong um sleeping pill that came out in um during the gulf war if you remember president the first bush the good bush not shrub uh <laughs> he actually took it because he couldn't get to sleep during the uh and it was a brand new um sleeping mm. tablet and it was uh it was marketed that it it was the kind of, kind of pill that where you didn't just get drowsy, but you took it and you're out for a while. 
So would he slip it into their drinks? Yes. Oh. Before he, when he knew he was going to kill somebody, he would crush up five to seven of them and had them in a cup. Oh home. man! So when he brought the guy home, if he knew he was going to kill this guy and keep this guy, the first thing he would do is offer him a drink, and he would pour him a rum and coke. Holy shit! And once you drank that, <laughs> you're out. Why did he get yeah. lazy and not have that on hand? Well, he was one of the first guys to do what we call doctor shopping. Um, oh he was a third shift worker at the chocolate factory, and he he went to several different doctors and told them, "I can't sleep at night," mm. and I found this health scan. Actually, there was an article in Time magazine about Halcyon in 1991, and that's where he heard about it. Wow. So he asked about it, and um, the article was about Bush taking it. <laughs> and so he'd ask for it by name, and there were several doctors that gave him pills, but he, he just ran out of okay, them. Okay, I got you. Damn. So he brings this guy home. He does not have him pilled up. And he said the, the guy instinct kicked in and said there's something wrong with him. Well, he didn't want it. He felt, said he just felt weird about it so when he wouldn't do it then he and jeffrey got into a fight and during the fight Dahmer picked up a knife and he ran out the apartment ran down the hall ran out into the street and down the block was a couple of milwaukee coppers on a the thing that i enjoy about this is this is the detective's account firsthand so everything you've heard you know uh he was doing this he was doing that he's telling you the firsthand story. So this is not bullshit. It's from the cop that arrested Donner. So he knows what happened. <clears throat> Completely different assignment. So here it is, uh, 1130 at night, quarter after 11 at night uh, on a hot muggy night. Uh -huh. And this guy pounds on the window. The two cops look at, here's a black male with just whitey tidy underwears on and handcuffs. Shoo. And the first thing they thought was, Hey, to they got on the air the and they said, is anybody missing any equipment? Like, you know, it's very embarrassing. <laughs> When a prisoner gets away from you, right? yeah. it ruins your reputation. Yeah. <laughs> but when nobody answered, um, they got out and said, hey, what the fuck's going on? And he said, well, I met this guy and we were fucking around and he wanted to take some pictures. And I didn't want to do the bondage. And we got in a fight. And he pulled a knife on me. And I'm out here. And I said, well, do you want to press charges? Let's take him. He goes, no, I really don't want to press charges. I just mm, want this. Man. And it's so interesting of how things were back then with laws. If you heard this particular situation today people will probably be getting arrested and they allowed this guy to go back into the apartment to ask him, did you want to press? Oh no, I just want to get, you know, my stuff back. It's crazy. It's crazy. And cup off. Well, the two coppers got out, but we had Smith and Wesson handcuffs. Oh, and Dahmer shit. had a different type. Because he had so, different check, handcuff no keys. Shit. They had to go back to so Dahmer's the key house. didn't work. Oh God. So damn. they followed the guy back, knocked on the door. Jeffrey Dahmer opened the door and he was gassed. And they even said to him, look, we don't care what you freaks are doing in there. Oh. But just give us the handcuff key. Well, he kind of fumbled around. And like most cops, they just bogarted their way in. <laughs> and he kind of fumbled around. So they started looking for the key. But there was no key because he always got the handcuffs back by cutting off their hands. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Shit. So, uh, there ain't no key, Ralph. You well, got to uh, boot your way out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He got, the, he got them off by cutting off their fucking hands. So the Ow. one officer went into the bedroom and found uh, uh, the top drawer open a little bit. And there was all these Polaroid photographs in there. Mm. So he picked up a photograph. And he saw the photograph of a, of a dismembered and cut open body. Wow. And he told me, he said, the, Pat, the first thing I thought was, uh, where did this guy get these autopsy photographs from? <sighs> but he said, the more I looked at the photograph, the more I realized the room in the photograph was the room that I was standing <laughs> oh, in. Oh, God. That's right so he said to his moment. partner in the next room, it was an efficiency apartment, like one main room, a bathroom, and a yeah. little bedroom. Uh -huh. uh, he said, you better handcuff this guy. And when he said that, all hell broke loose. And there was a big, big fight. And oh, these were really? Two big, strong Milwaukee cops. One's 6'4", about 220. The other about 6'1", and kind of barrel-chested. The taller guy was kind of a nice guy, but the other guy, I wouldn't call him an assaultive officer, but the kind that would respond in kind of <laughs> sure. uh, and How big uh, was Dahmer, by the way? He was a good-sized man. He was huh. 6'1", about 175 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, Good-looking guy. Uh, the night that I arrested him, I had to take all his clothes off, him, so I got to see him buck naked. I, there Ooh. wasn't an inch of, of body <laughs> fat on the guy. I mean, he was yeah. a, I hear humans not are a, lean. a muscular <laughs> guy, but not unmuscular as right. well. Um, so, yeah, it, these two officers uh, had a hell of a fight with this guy. Wow. When I got there, um, well, after they, they finally got him corralled, and like any place, it's not good to fight with the police. Uh, so <laughs> after they finally got him corralled and handcuffed, and they had him handcuffed the way we used to do it, where you hogtied people, where you would handcuff <laughs> behind their back and cuff their 
their legs and put them on their stomach and then cuff your legs to your hands. Oh, but, you know, wow. we ended up killing yeah. everybody like that. <laughs> well, <laughs> they found that people that were big or that were under um, some kind of drugs, they, a lot of guys died in that Suffocate position. Suffocated in right. some way, shape, or form. <laughs> so yeah. they changed that. Before, when I first came on, they taught us to choke people out. Yeah, the choke I mean, hold and cho yeah, choke them out. Some people never like came back. <laughs> so they went from that to this other one. <laughs> and now they, they don't do that anymore. But at yeah, the time, that yeah. was standard. And if you saw a prisoner like that, you knew that some bad shit had happened. Uh -huh. happened. Yeah. So when I got there, he was bleeding from the mouth and had a, a massive, like, rug burn from you know, like rolling they around were, on the yeah. rug and the, these Oof. two officers i mean one was outside the door his hair was sticking up his, his sam brown was to the side he was all the shovels hot night so he was dripping with oh, sweat yeah and i i i so i walked up and said ralph what what's going on he goes go look in the refrigerator oh wow shit. so then i walked into the apartment and there was Dahmer on the ground and he was he was crying I mean, he was kind he of knew whining. It was over, Johnny. And the other, yeah. the, yeah, once that fridge door fucking <laughs> suction <laughs> sound came, officer, <laughs> the bigger officer had his uh, knee in, in him, and I said to him, "I said, Ralph, what is going?" And he looked the same. His eyes were real big, and he was sweating. He was wiping his face with a hanky, and I said, "What's going?" On? I goes, "Just look in the refrigerator." So that's when I went and opened up the refrigerator, and once you opened it up, it was an apartment-sized refrigerator. It was empty on the inside, except. On the door, there was condiments, you know, A1 sauce, Liam Perrins, mustard and ketchup. <laughs> Not much but in the middle, <laughs> oh, the only thing that was in the middle of right. this refrigerator <laughs> in the back was an open box of Arm & Hammer uh, uh. baking soda. And I thought, you know, my mom used to do that to kind of freshen the thing. <laughs> yeah. And a box containing uh, the head of a black male. And it was freshly wow. severed and fresh. And the eyes and the mouth were like, like that. Wide so wow. When I opened it up, uh, my partner said I backed up to him and screamed like a girl. Oh, shit. I didn't. But I do remember thinking, oh, man, I got to get the fuck out of here. I mean, it was really, I mean, I knew I wasn't horrible. in danger, but it's so irrational fear to see something like this. Yes. And I'd only been working the homicide unit for about a year. So I knew, hey, if you walk out of here, that's the end of your career. But, uh, <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's how it started. Wait, wait, wait. You wow. said there were two, though. Where was the other one? The two cops? No, you said there were two. Uh... So you got to keep in mind, Opie and Anthony is a very free and open, when their show was around, it's a very uh, free and open platform. Uh, they, they're they a comedy show. So, you know, they they said some pretty racy stuff on their 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 uh, their show. I mean, they dealt with politics and race and uh, you know, that's what you were getting. If you, if you, you know, uh, pop culture, uh, it's, it was a dirty, raunchy show, uh, kind of like Howard Stern back in the day. So, you know, that's why you're hearing jokes and you're hearing material like that. If it's, if it's upsetting anybody, but this is, it's the con, I mean, it, it that was the content back then. Heads, no? No, in the refrigerator, just one head. Now we but found. I, I wanted to play this in, 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 uh, you know, interest of Pat telling the story because he's such a, great storyteller and it's it's unfortunate that he's passed away in a little freezer we found seven other frozen yeah. heads okay <laughs> and we found three skulls right uh, so pat that, took Dahmer downtown and then the medical examiner who we also interviewed for the film dr jeffrey jensen sort of came in with his guys and started whew. taking out all the rest of the evidence and that's when the the size and the scope of i mean the, if you think this is humor you should hear how nurses talk my mom worked in a hospital for over 20 years and just emergency room and trauma nurses, the way that they talk. It's to deal with stress in those certain ways. And cops are like that too. I know a lot of police officers, a lot of great police officers, that they use that type of thing because of the stuff that they deal with. And it's it's just a it's a, a way to deal with stress. <clears throat> we all do it. Believe me, I do it my profession as well, too. Of the scene actually right. came. I left my partner there. Harrell showed. Well, first I saw, I said, don't anybody touch anything. Yeah. We got a boss down there, and he said... <clears throat> take him downtown pat so my partner actually got the shittier end of the deal he spent the next 24 hours you know discovering penises and heads and it's crazy all in the skulls, apartment all oh yeah, was, where was all that stuff it was in all in there right and oh, that, they're telling like us was, pat has five minutes because these what? guys have these guys have tv wow these guys have tv Are to you promote me? yes oh my god I, I, I literally was hoping you could stay till 10 30. <laughs> they have tv i love Let's, this stuff okay um hey, can we stay they're, they're yeah, telling us right. they have TV. Got it. Wow. This is a really big radio show. You should stay right here. I'm telling you, yeah, right but now, this is, sir. Uh, oh, the, uh, I want people to see this film. You stay right the fuck <laughs> where you are. 
when you met wow. Dahmer, I, I have to ask you that. Yeah. What was the first, how did you actually, you're meeting with him, with this guy who I don't think you understood the scope of what a psycho he was at that moment, right? No, but I mean, I had never seen, I mean, I had run of the mill murder and I've had my run of the mill interrogation and confession, but uh, this was different from the beginning because, well, first of all, he was, they beat the snot out of him because you just don't fight with the police. So as I, we were taking him from the uh, uh, apartment to the paddy wagon, he was already, you could see, dejected. And, mm. and uh, How uh, dare you? So How I decided I would you? take a kind of a lighter tack with him. And um, I, I shook his hand, called him Pat. I went and got a cup of coffee and cigarettes. And the first thing I said to him was, oh, so can you tell me about that in the refrigerator? <laughs> <laughs> and he, his first statement to me was, well, his first statement to me was, you're not going to let him beat me anymore and oh wow i said no no one's gonna deal with you anymore but me uh and i had him in that little nine by eleven room uh and actually when i told the cop to take the cuffs off and the cop said pat you don't want to take the cuffs off this guy because i fought with him and he's no pussy and i said <laughs> I, I said to him if we take the cuffs off you if you promise you behave you know i'll get you a coffee and cigarettes and we can relax and he just shook his head but the first words he said after they took the cuffs off the cop said i'll be right outside the door pat as soon as he closed the door he said uh you're not going to let him hit me anymore. I said, oh, no. wow. He really didn't wow. want to get hit anymore. So huh? it was the old good guy, <laughs> oh. bad guy from the beginning. So I decided wow. to be the good guy. But you sure. never had to take in the cuffs off you because you're a six, seven guy. So you weren't worried about it. Yeah, him. I wasn't really worried about it. But I mean, <laughs> yeah. But well, you never know. I, I've never inter I never interrogated a guy with cuffs on. It's right. just not a good thing. Uh -huh. didn't, didn't want to fuck up his suit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Comfortable. So. <laughs> so you take the cuffs off him and you sit with him. Yeah. And then I introduced myself to him and I said, I'm the one who's going to be dealing with you on this. I said, but before we get started, do you smoke or would you like a cup of coffee? And he looked up at me and said, yeah, I'd like both. So I went, got one and came back. And when I asked him about the, the head in the refrigerator, he said, I don't feel it's in my best interest to talk about that. Oh. So I said, well, we don't have to talk about it. Oh, we can right. talk about other things. How about the Lee and Perrin? Why, why don't we start <laughs> there? And we'll work our way up to the head. No, uh, he was very... Uh, he, he says, what's going to happen to me if I don't talk to you? So I kind of explained to him the booking process and he seemed to understand it because he, he had been arrested before mm -hmm. for lewd and lascivious. And, uh, but then he asked me, can I get my own cell? And mm. I knew then that he knew about the bullpen. If you know about any bullpen, it's just a shithole where, you know, everybody and their brothers in there, it's mm -hmm. disgusting. And he didn't want to go there. So I could pick up on that right away. I said, no, it's a Friday night and the bullpen there is packed. You go. I said, there's no way you're going to get a single cell. A little leverage. I said, if you stay here with me, we could talk about And we did talk about things for about three and a half hours before he crapped out to me. So, mm -hmm. What stuff did you talk about that I had nothing well, to do I with? Well, I picked up that he was an alcoholic. And right. I myself, uh, like most coppers, suffer from old John Barleycorn. And I had hmm. my own battles with it. So I was knowledgeable about AA kind of 12-stepped him, but we talked for about an hour about religion. He grew up in a very uh, a strong Lutheran religious family. Mm. We talked about homosexuality. We talked about whether there was a God or not. Uh, we talked. He loved his family, especially his grandmother. Um, so for about three, and, a, and, and to tell you the truth, if you talk to most homicide detectives, the, the typical homicide confession takes about three and a half hours before mm. they, they start to, to get into that defeated position and start right. to tell you what happened so it was right about that but every time when he finally did he said um if i tell you you'll be famous i said oh come <laughs> on man i've seen a bunch of shit before this yeah. ain't gonna be anything and then he said but if i do tell you you'll hate me and you won't want to talk to me anymore i said no no i'll stick with you so he goes well if i'm going to tell you i'm going to start at the beginning and mm. he told me about his first homicide back in bath ohio when he was 18 13 years ago wow so i put my pen down i'm listening to him and then he talked about going to the army in <clears throat> ohio and getting kicked out and then moving here to grandma's where he started killing again and when he got to about a second or third i said we'll take a break i went to get some more coffee and the lieutenant came out to me and said is he talking i said well yeah he's he's talking but i, I said i don't think he's going to help us i said mm -hmm. he's a he's told me he's killed like five or six people and he hasn't even told me about the guy in the refrigerator. You know, I said, I think he's a bullshitter. And he goes, no, no, no. Your partner called. They found 11 heads. And oh they my God. So, so I went back <laughs> in. I took my pen out. I was okay, let's start over again. <laughs> <laughs> let's start from the beginning. I, it's because, important to, to say when wow. you were talking about that point, you just thought there was the one head in his refrigerator. Bullshit. I'm waiting to find Holy. out about this head. Stephen McDaniels is a weird dude. The other guy, uh, Grant Amato, was really strange too. I should do those. Uh, I should do those cases sometime. We can watch the interrogation videos of them. It's those are insane.
very crazy interrogations. That sucked. That was yeah. telling me about somebody about. he killed 13 years ago and two years ago, and and it turned out to be another four or five before we finally got to the head. Got but to the I head. I went back in the... with the whole. Yeah, again, I mean, it's not a video presentation, but Patrick Kennedy was such a great storyteller. I literally could sit and listen to this guy forever. And like I said, it's just, it's really sad that he passed away because I would have loved to, to hear more about that. And, uh, you know, with the recent Netflix series, it would have been really nice to have his, you know, take in that too. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just really love listening to this guy talk and, He's just very knowledgeable, and having that firsthand account was really great. New attitude about the no shit. And, wow! And did you did you find yourself liking him at all? I, I'm sure it's different to to actually talk to somebody than it is to hear. Me about too. Him. I do. Well, like I said in the movie to Chris, who uh, really got a lot out of me. I'm talking more about it now, but 20 years ago, I wouldn't have liked this. Right. Uh, when you spend six weeks with somebody, 10, 12 hours a day, you have breakfast with them, lunch mm. with them. Uh, he, yeah, I, I form you know, detectives are trained to build rapport, to form a relationship. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I, I kind of he was a pathetic fuck. OK, he could yeah. not he couldn't make an emotional connection with anybody. No, I even asked him at one time. I said, why don't you just get a boyfriend? Why, you yeah. know, why did you have to kill everybody? And to me, he was just this really pathetic human being who on the other side no, Dr. Bob. had this obsession with this this constant pursuit of the of this hedonistic pleasurable lifestyle where he lived in an area, all of his money went towards alcohol and the pursuit of pleasure sexually uh, mm -hmm. and his drugs. I mean, that was his whole wow. reason for living. So he was a very, <clears throat> and as a lover of the people that we talked, he was a very <clears throat> selfish lover. I mean, he was a giver, not a taker and uh, a giver, not a taker, selfish or selfless, selfish oh. lover. If you're homosexual oh. and you're selfish, <laughs> you're giving. Oh, you. Oh, okay. You're. Uh, you're. You uh, got the, it with the hand motion. You're the train. You're the. You're the train, not the tunnel, as they say. <laughs> oh, okay. Dude, I gotta ask you because obviously we're running out of time. But I gotta ask you based on what you just said about you know building a rapport and everything. How did you feel when he was killed? Did you? Everybody asked that. And yeah. To tell you the truth, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit it, but I felt really shitty about did it. Did you? To tell you the truth, I'm. I'm okay. I'm thinking I'm against the, mm -hmm. uh, capital punishment, and. I felt sorry for the guy. I mean, yeah. he was such a pathetic individual. And like I told Chris in his movie, I felt bad that I felt bad for him. I mean, it made me what I, I remember mm. thinking, right. what is there about me that connected with this freak right. that I feel so bad to make about you question it. yourself. How, how did you hear it? Somebody called you or you were the news? Yeah, I walked into, I, by that time I had been day shift. Um, actually, the Dahmer thing kind of helped my career a little bit. I finally <laughs> got off the late shift and got <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> to the day shift and um, uh, the captain called me over. He was on the phone with the correctional facility when he was mm. murdered. They called right down right away. And so I, I walked in. It was the same thing. I walked in. I took my coat off. He goes, hey, Kennedy, they killed your boy. Your boy. And I said, what are you talking about? And I, I got on the phone with the guy there and told me what happened. So, now, wow. how, how long had you had it been since you had any contact with him since the, the professional aspect of it, the questioning and everything? Of the the last time I talked to him was uh, when he was sentenced to 956 years in prison. Wow. And I shook his hand as he went off. To, to jail and that What'd was it and he had requested to talk to me a couple of times uh but i didn't really mm. want to anymore after okay that. yeah 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 and what happened was um my partner dennis murphy went up to the correctional institution where he was at for another uh homicide you know people in jail are always saying we'll give you some information mm -hmm. if you can get me out so he was up there talking to somebody and he went to visit jeff and he told me that jeff had put on 35 pounds and had gone from a very straight acting male, gay male, to a stereotypical, almost flamboyant one. Wow. And told him that he is requested to get out of segregation because for the three and a half years he was there, they kept him in a nine by 12 windowless cell 23 hours a day. Mm. Wow. And only one hour a day, he was put like in a room where it was open to the sky so you could see the fresh air wow. by himself. And he told Dennis, he goes, I'm going crazy here. I can't take it, you know just to be locked, like with no communication. And he even said, I know that when I get put in the general population, they'll kill me. And it was within three months that he was put in the general wow. population. Wow. Oh, no one knows that. that. he was murdered. Wow. No kidding. And, but you, it really upset you when he was killed. Like, I know, well, it, I don't like to say upset like I'm some kind of a person. No, no, no. I mean, but, but, you, I, 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 I <laughs> but you But you talk about the documentary. It was felt, really interesting. Yeah. It, yeah I, I, I was supposed to go to class that night because I was going on to get my graduate degree because I wanted to get out of the police department. I was frying. Being a mm. homicide detective, and uh, 
I turned around, and went back home and went to my little apartment, just sat there by myself. And I don't know. I, it was another one of those things where I felt bad about feeling bad. No shit. Yeah. So, yeah. No one sense. thinks you're a pussy. You're a six, seven uh, homicide detective. I, I, yeah, right. No one's mistaking you. Six, seven what? pussy homicide <laughs> detective. <yeah. laughs> what was your first inkling that this was a massive case? By oh, the when I saw the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, it's, it, there's well, been other situations. Well. But where you realize, holy fuck, this is going to be an international story. That's what I mean. No, I really didn't think it would be an international story. No. I was surprised the next day when <laughs> I came into work, oh. and there was literally a media s a circus, circus right, right outside the police. So I knew instinctively that you didn't want to fuck this case up, right? Uh -huh. but, uh, you had to do it right. So, um, so it's interesting that that he says that. And let's go back to, uh, let's go back to, um, let's talk about Idaho for a second. You know, like you said, you don't want to screw this case up. You have to do everything by the book. Uh, that's why a lot of information in that case is being held from us right now. And I've said this all along. I said this weeks ago. Why would you want to play all your cards and put all the information out there for the defense to have? Um, you know, if you if you feel that you have your right man, you have the right person, you know, you're the right suspect, then why would you put everything out there for the media to report and get back to the defense so they could defend that? Um, obviously they get to look at the same evidence and defend that, but you don't want this getting screwed up in the public. And that's why that gag order has been put on. So AZ, the only, the only reason it was timed out, I thought that you were causing a little bit of trouble in the chat and I do apologize. Um, so you are, are here and you know, like we just try to keep respectful. We understand that people like to joke around and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we welcome everybody here, but we just want to keep a clean chat and, and not be disrespectful towards anybody. So all good. All good. Yeah, I can. And I was young. I was energetic. It was exciting. It was a good time, to, you know, when you're in your 30s and you're doing what you've been trying to do. So I, I can honestly say for those six weeks, I poured everything. That's a career case. Into, right yeah, there, yeah, it was. I knew it would make or break. Uh -huh. Did you uh, chase that high afterwards? Like uh, another case <laughs> that was high profile? What was, no, the, what actually, was the second? Uh, oh, no. What was the second case? We then? found a finger in a garage. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah. 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 Well, I can tell you that during this time, anybody that, you know, every we got reports all the time. There's bones over here. And I mean, they're always, you know, ribs, right. rib <laughs> yeah. bones and chicken yeah. bones. Yeah. And, you know, but they didn't check it all out. That was oh. it for you, though. Oh, you uh, knew that was going to be the day it. that he got sent to to jail. The next day, I I got put to the late shift, and that night I got another homicide. So I mean, I oh, it was wow. a very busy year for us that year, and wow. so I really didn't have time to think about it or process it. Mm -hmm. um, they just went back to work. I'm telling my interruption. Oh, they're yeah, telling they're telling us sucks. you have to go because you have yeah. press. It's your guys. Uh, I want to properly promote this. Absolutely. I have one more question to talk to the guy who made this film, man. We'll this, watch this the film. The film is yeah, really yeah. good. I'm sure he's, you right. know, uh, uh, it was you. really, it, but this is fascinating. You were there. It's called the Jeffrey Dahmer Files. It opens uh, February the 15th. I uh, will, of course, Twitter it. Select theatrical beginning is at the IFC Center here in New York. Um, cable video on demand platforms. You can grab it on Comcast, Cox, Cablevision, Time Warner, Satellite TV, Direct TV, iTunes, Xbox, uh, SundanceNow.com. And uh, go to jeffthemovie.com. It's fascinating. And you can tell by listening to this, we literally had, no, we would have sat here with you until yeah. fucking 11 o'clock. We want to talk, and we want to talk to the detective months. about it. He's telling interesting stories. I want to hear what that fucking F stop of the camera was. <laughs> I, have, <laughs> I, I, have, I have one more. I, I, it's really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I have one question for Pat. There was one one particular, Patrick, whatever you prefer. There was one 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 <laughs> thing about a guy escaped, a boy escaped Dahmer's apartment, went to two cops. They oh, didn't right. know what was happening. They sent this kid back, and Dahmer murdered him immediately. It was obviously a tremendous mistake. Did you know the cops that that happened to? Yes, and actually, in the middle of the interrogation, when he told me about this one, I, I said, time out. Are you trying to tell me that two Milwaukee police officers Oof. walked this kid back there? So I, I took a break. I went and told – well, I didn't talk to any bosses right away. I mm. went and got on the phone to the 3rd District, and I said uh, – did you have a, could you check back to July? Cause he was uncanny about um, dates of oh, his really? victims. Uncanny. Like most serial killers are, I can, I can but they said, yeah, a squad got sent to check for a naked Asian male oh. off 25th and state. I said, find out who those guys are. He, t they told me. And I said, uh, wake them up and tell them to get down here within half hour. They were there. And I told them, and they were both like, just, Crestfall. Pretty no. much sent a man yeah. to his murdered. death. Well, it's a, it, 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 we I know, know it's more complex to talk that. about it. But, yes. Uh, yes. And these are, were good 
good men. I mean, both of them I saw them put their life on the line. One guy was in a shootout with a guy who killed a cop. I mean, wow. these were courageous young Christian males, I would think they would say. But in the situation that they got in, when they were surrounded by a people of color, the only other person that they really believed was the other white male. Mm -hmm. um, and kind wow. of that's what I teach now in, in college. Uh, it's, it's a thing called the police complex that anybody can get. And like I say, it's a lot longer to get into it. And I hate Absolutely. to leave it like this. I know are two fine gentlemen, but did they make a mistake? Oh, hell yeah. They wow. made a hell of a mistake. You, gotta you, fascinated. you know I mean, what the odd uh, thing is, though, if if perhaps those <clears throat> officers in the car would have had the proper handcuff key, he would have gone away, away again. He would have got so, away again because this guy did not want, he was embarrassing for Yes, him. He did not want to press charges. So it's another case that he might have just ended up with more dead and people. There's, so. there's at least six or seven pivotal times throughout his murderous career where authority figures had him and he Oof. was able to fool them. I'm talking about public psychologists, uh, probation parole officers, mm -hmm. judges, uh, the building superintendent and his own father wow. who saw the bones of dead people and believed what Jeff told him that they were the bones of a, a dog that he had found. This is fascinating Dude, stuff. You, you, I, I, I got to come back. I am seeing Amazing. this. Amazing. Uh, your interview was so it's, good. Thank it, you for coming to it's on, it's, wherever it's on you are. Demand. But no, but it's just, you know, it's, it's hard to top the detective who talked to Dahmer. I mean, that it's just, it, the film was well done. I'll say that. It was excellent, and it kept me from the beginning to the end. I'm right. always looking for great uh, video on demand stuff, and this is yeah. I mean, I'm going JeffTheMovie.com to get all the information you need, you. and uh, just a, a, a genuine. Can I make pleasure. a shameless plug? Sure, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, because I worked with Chris, he's the one who told me you got to write a book about what happened. Mm -hmm. So um, over the last year, I I just completed a, a book that starts with the day I, I find the head in the refrigerator <laughs> and ends the day I shake his hand. Wow. And kind of tells what happened to me personally. I mean, I ended up getting a divorce out of the deal. Wow. It's called uh, More Than a Head. So I'm I'm <laughs> actually catch. looking for a publisher uh, <laughs> to take a look at it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. I, I, who wouldn't pick that up in a yeah. second? Well, it's fantastic. You're unknown and, and everybody's and, got a book, they say. And you so really I'm believe like, you got divorced because of Jeffrey Dahmer? Oh, no. I mean, divorce... That was a big thing. My wife was the day it came. I did get home for like 24 hours. And when I got home, she was sitting. We were having problems anyway, but that mm. was the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Would you, so at would the you, end of it, you say special thanks to Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> <laughs> would, would you, would you uh, uh, explain in detail to other people about this case? Or would, would you... Oh, yeah, I've done it many times. So... I mean, I mean, during the, the case. Oh, no, we're under your... gag order. We're not allowed to talk So to even anybody. your wife, you wouldn't be like, so the she fucking head well, over problem. here. She didn't want to talk about it. Oh, she, she didn't want okay. to talk about it with the kids. Uh, right, she right. Realized we're taking the kids out of the house yeah. for six weeks. I was yeah, alone gotcha. quite a bit. And... Yeah. Oh man! No, homicide detectives alone just not a good thing. You watch First Forty Eight? No, I can't watch any of that crap. Yeah, I just can't. I watch it, and it's like, why do these guys talk? You could tell that the cops are pissed off when they lawyer up. So do what pisses the cops off. No matter how much lawyering up you do, Black Skull in the refrigerator does not get explained away. <laughs> Trump, Trump, all that shit. We got to get them yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, have yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks man. for having us. Love it. Right on. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> All right, so that was a, a really great segment from the Opie and Anthony show back in 2013. Uh, Detective, uh, Detective Pat Kennedy uh, was the actual arresting officer and got the confession out of Dahmer. So a uh, really great segment there. Uh, a lot of firsthand uh, uh, knowledge of what happened that night, what happened up in those few weeks. And, uh, you know, I would I would encourage you to go watch the Jeffrey Dahmer files. It's a documentary and Pat Kennedy is in that documentary and, um, it's all real, you know, real world stuff. It's not, um, it's not like a Netflix series, but it's a, it's a really, um, great docu. Um, Jeffrey Dahmer was killed in prison and not much. I think it was only in there about 90 days and they got him. Some guy got him with a broom handle, I believe. Uh, I think some guy cornered him and got him. Let me see. On November 28th, 1994, Dahmer was beaten to death by Christopher Scarvey, a fellow inmate at a Columbia Correctional Institution in uh, Portage, Wisconsin. So, you know, a lot of the times things will happen like that to, to elevate uh, that inmate, uh, to elevate his status. So they'll pick someone that is that is famous to elevate their status and, and kind of go after them. So, um, so what I want to play next is well, maybe we'll do about a two hour show tonight. I'm going to play the actual courtroom footage 
of Patrick Kennedy. Uh, I didn't, I thought I was going to get to a lot more segment segments tonight, but I don't think we're going to get there. But um, let me pull up the actual courtroom footage of uh, when he was in court. Excuse me. Yeah. So I'm going to swear all the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth. The whole truth is nothing but the truth. So help me God. I do. Please be seated, sir. And that's and Pat Kennedy, Kennedy back in the day, Washington. very young. Patrick Kennedy. You want me to do the confessions? It would be the the sentencing, correct? But I just I think it's uh, or I have the I have the we could do what what do you guys want to do? I have the victim impact statements, or I can play the sentencing. That's the the uh, the videos I have queued up. Let me know in the comments so we can do victim impact statements or the sentencing. <clears throat> Let me know, and then we'll move on. We got about a half an hour left with the show. <clears throat> Either or, okay. Um, okay, let me, uh, let's play, I, I, we'll, we'll do this. How about we do like half and half? We'll listen to some of this, the, the, the impact statements and then we'll play the sentencing. Um, let's do this one. Uh oh, you got a commercial. All right. Here, 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 Oh no, okay, we're set. I, I look, looked the wrong direction for you. <laughs> okay, why, why don't you call the case so we can make a record of who's here? Case number F912542, State of Wisconsin versus Jeffrey L. Dahmer. Appearances for the record, please. E. Michael McCann, District Attorney in Milwaukee County, appearing for the State of Wisconsin with me at council table. Okay, I'm J.W. Smith, uh, brother of Edward Warren Smith. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, you can give a copy of this to Judge Green. That's what I'm going to say. Okay. Sir, you've handed the bailiff uh, a written statement, and you're going to read from that statement? Is that correct? Go ahead, sir. Our parents, Walter and Josephine Smith, were two hardworking Americans who raised 13 children. Of the survivors, I've been selected to express a statement of each one's personal pain. Joseph Patrick. Edward is gone, and I find comfort in these words. Whosoever believeth in me shall never die. Michael Fitzgerald. I'm sure Edward was a friend to Jeffrey Dahmer, as he was to us who knew him well. I have these pictures in my mind that are running continuously. How can anyone comprehend or come to accept that never again in this life will Edward be. Ernest Richard, the death of Eddie has shown me the injustices in the world today. John Andrew, Jeffrey Dahmer has erased a million future memories for me of my closest brother. Teresa, I need to tell my brother that I love him and it hurts thinking about what he could have become. Henry Gale, I will never get over the effects that Jeffrey Dahmer has placed in my mind and forever imprinted in my life. May God send Eddie's soul to rest in peace. Carolyn Ann, Jeffrey Dahmer took away my best friend, my better half, my roommate. He took away the laughter. His biggest dream was to be a model, and I hope that one day I can fulfill his dream of being a queen-size model and keep people laughing as much as he did. Robert Esther, I miss you, Edward, and I love you. And maybe now you can finally be at rest. James Willie, myself. Thank you, Our Nancy. Dad is gone, Appreciate you. And now so are you. I never had the chance to say goodbye to either of you. Dad taught us to love and accept each other and expect that 
Well, excuse me, I lost my place here. For they, no, I say it. No. They have taught us to love and accept each person for who they are. You were unique and I loved you. Mia, I wanted to see justice done and no dollar amount can bring my brother back. If you feel any remorse, let's change the son of Sam law to Jeffrey Dahmer law. Walter Lewis, it is hard to conceive that a person could take another's life. Ed belonged to someone. How can you fix what is broken, replace what is lost? Warren, it is easy for me to forgive the sin done to my brother, Ed, but to forget, I cannot. I find each day an inward struggle, but in my faith, I find comfort. Josephine Helen, our mother, this is a terrible tragedy to my family, but I still have 12 children to live for, and in them, hopefully, I will overcome it. Let me tell you briefly about Edward Warren Smith on a more personal level. Ed was raised in a Christian home in Brookfield, where he learned how to be a loving, trusting, respectful human being. Eddie inherited all the blessings that a family structure had to offer. The greatest of these blessings was love. Eddie's style of life and dress was uniquely flamboyant. He was intelligent, witty, compassionate toward the human race. At the time Eddie's life was taken from him, he was searching for his place amongst you and me. Although we have tried, it is impossible to summarize 27 years of this young man's life in five minutes. Perhaps it can best be said in St. John chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Edward Warren Smith tried to be Jeffrey Dahmer's friend. As a result, he lost his life. Mr. Dahmer, Eddie's gone now, the victim of your senseless killing. Where do we go from here? We ask ourselves. Why did this happen to a person like Eddie? He gave so much and asked so little. All he wanted was a chance to be himself. <clears throat> a chance to be happy. When all the facts are known, we hope that society will have gained some knowledge that will help prevent a tragedy such as the one Eddie suffered. There was no sacrifice too large or too small for Eddie. He truly loved giving and gave of himself abundantly. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I remember this one lady that has her impact statement and she literally loses control and she's like, I hate you, Jeffrey Dahmer or Jeffrey. I remember that. And I remember seeing that on the news. We speed up to the next uh, impact statement. And I've been given this opportunity to come before you on behalf of the Miller family. <clears throat> we want to say that there is no place in a civilized society for anyone who shows no regards for life, especially in the form and manner that Jeffrey Dahmer has shown. We can't afford to have anyone praying nor stalking our people, no matter what our difference may be. How can we as a civilized people accept the responsibility of ever considering putting someone of this nature back into society? But yeah, Graham, it was easy. That you see fit to give Jeffrey Dahmer the maximum sentence. To Jeffrey Dahmer, you have become a hero to a few but you have become a nightmare to so many more. That's including myself. At, before I sell in, in for the night, I find myself looking in closets, under beds, anywhere that you may be found. Jeez. Jeffrey Dahmer, due to your actions, this has caused my family a great deal of pain and emotional distress. Jeffrey Dahmer, through your, through your selfish actions, you have caused my family to suffer the loss of society and companionship of Ernest. This was done without any cause or provocation on the part of Ernest, despite the fact that you had the knives, the saws, the bats, the acid, the drills, and possibly a gun. Even while he was in a semi-conscious state of mind, you didn't give him the chance to fight for his life. You took his life like a thief in the night by cutting his throat. Rather than facing him and let him fight for the thing that he felt most dear, you took the coward way out. Did you ever stop to think that this is someone's son? Did you ever stop to think that this is someone's brother, nephew, uncle, cousin, grandson, or just someone's friend? Stone-faced. 
that's missing him dearly. Jeffrey Dahmer, just a couple of things about Ernest that you didn't take the time out to find out. First, Ernest was a dancer. This came naturally, and this was his dream, although his short, all through his short lived life. Second, he had a family that loved him. He has a niece now that's four months old that he'll never get to hold or play or just watch grow up. He have to look from heaven now. I hope that you live a long life so that one day you can appreciate life. On that day, you would, you would know my family's suffering. Furthermore, fortunate for you, Wisconsin doesn't ask you for what you have taken, but then you can only give once. I'm not for the death penalty, but you are a perfect candidate. To Mr. Boyle, first to you, I want to say thank you for not laying any of the blame on the victims. You didn't fail, it's just that God take care of his people. Truth shall always stand. The verdict was appropriate and absolute. Third, third, you and your staff had a job to do, and you did it well, and we respect that. To Mr. McCann, thank you for fighting the battle that Ernest couldn't fight for himself. As we sat back and fought the battle of faith, you taught us all a lesson on responsibility that we'll never forget. You and your staff has my family deepest respect. To the Dahmer family, I know that there are some dark days for your family, but the morning will come. So look to the hills and, and you will make it through. Thank you, sir. Again, ma'am, would you first identify yourself, please? My name is Shirley Hughes. I don't think it's this victim that has the uh, the outburst. And I'm Tony Anthony Hughes' mother. First of all, thank God and to give thanks to the judge and to Mr. McCann for the verdict that came in. I would like to say to Jeffrey Dahmer that he don't know the pain, the hurt, the loss, and the mental state that he had put our family in. But I'd just like to read a poem that a good friend of my son wrote. Tony thought you was his friend. He knew you. Why am I a victim in your cruel and rueful world, although I can't communicate with a loud voice? Listen to me anyway. <clears throat> Try to have mercy on my moans. Look at the tears roll down my face. See that each one is a cry for help. And realize, realize my sign of showing you that I want to live. Tell me just what is it that I've done to you to make you such a monster, to make you such a maniac, to make you such a devil. My God, who are you? What are you? You have never shown me this side of you. I put my trust in you. I thought you were my friend until the end, yet I didn't know you as well as I thought. I never felt the end would be this way. Is there anyone that can help me? Mom, dad, sister, brother, someone, please help me. What ha what's happening to me? Everything seemed to be slowing down. I'm confused, I'm drowsy. My coordination have been contaminated. My friend, what is it that you has given me? What is it that you're doing to me? I'm helpless. Is that a thrill to you to know that I can't fight you back? And that the hardest struggle in my life is fighting to keep my eyes open with the hope of seeing the dawn of a new day. Yet you have total control over me. My life is in the hands of once a friend, but now I told strangers. I think she's the next who victim. Have, who have become we'll my We'll play that nightmare. and then we'll play the sentencing. But one day I know you'll get caught. You think you're smooth at what you're doing. Remember, whatever's done in the dark, it will come to the light. And the whole world will know just how ugly a person you really are. Mom, I'm gone. My hope, my breath, my want to live have been taken away from me unwillingly and emotionally. I know that you are, there's a dragon piercing your heart day and night because of this, but yet I'm not far away. When Thank you, you get cold, I wrap my arms around you to warm you. If you get sad, I'll softly grab your heart and cheer you up. If you smile, I'll smile right along with you. And when you're happy, I'll, be, I'll become, I'll know it because you're thinking that Two fingers and one thumb means I love you in sign language. My son was deaf. When you cry, take one teardrop 
and place it outside your window ledge. And when I pass by, I'll exchange it for one of mine. Two fingers and one thumb, Mom. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> ma'am, would you first identify? Is it this lady that has the outburst? I can't remember. Is it this lady? No. Not her. Oh, I got it. It's this lady with the jacket, I remember. Okay, let's play this. I, no, I'm not trying to disrespect any of the, the victims here, but I, I do want to play the sentencing, and this is really the one that I wanted to, to show tonight. So we'll, we'll, we'll speed up. And then we'll play a little bit of the sentencing when Jeffrey talks. I don't need to need a microphone. My name is Rita Isbell. Yeah, no, ma'am. You'll address the court first. My name is Rita Isbell, and I'm the oldest sister of Errol Lindsay. Je whatever your name is, Satan. I'm mad. This is how you act when you are out of control. I don't want to ever see my mother have to go through this again. Never, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, I hate you, mother. I hate you. That is out of control. Don't me, Jeffrey. I kill you, God. Powerful. One penny for the presentation of the defense in this manner. That's uh that's raw emotion there. That's very, very painful to watch. Wow. Yeah, I agree. I don't want that feeling ever, 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 ever. We need one more upvote, one more upvote to give away a free gift card. I just need one person. There it is. We got the 50. We got the 50. We got 50. We got 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a card again. Now I have to explain because there's different people here again. The way that we're going to do this is I have another $10 Target gift card to give away. The rules are this. If you do not want me to get your address, then do not participate. I'm going to pick out a card. I'm going to hold it close to my chest and you guys will just keep rattling off cards until someone gets it. If that person gets it, what I'll have them do is email me at theopinionatedidiot at gmail.com. I will verify their screen name. I'll have them do a little uh, thing on on uh, to verify their screen name. And then once they do that, they need to send me their address, and I will get this mailed out to them tomorrow. So I'm going to shuffle the deck here. And again, if you don't want to give me your home address or somewhere this can be sent, don't participate because you might take it away from someone else. All right. I'm going to pick a card here. All right. Let's see. I have picked the card. You guys can start guessing now. You can start guessing the card now and the winning card will get a gift card, $10 gift card. Nope. Keep going. We still don't have a winner. We still don't have a winner. We still don't have a winner. Keep going. We have a winner. Stop. We have a winner. Stop, 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 stop. We have a winner. Wow, that was that one went quick. All right. And the winner is. The winner is. Ready? 
Queen of Spades, Christine Brown won. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm writing your name. All right, Christine, if you just email me at the opinionated, the opinionated idiot at gmail.com, I will just have you do a small task to verify who you are, and then I'll just have you send me uh, your address, and I'll get this out hopefully to you tomorrow. Okay, let's move on with the rest of the show here. Uh, we'll play a little bit of the Jeffrey Dahman sentencing, and then we're going to wrap this up probably at about 10.30-ish. So about 20 I'm going to be minutes. eating a Chipotle burrito. Okay. Your Honor, it is over now. This has never been a case of trying to get free. I didn't ever want freedom. Frankly, I wanted death for myself. This was a case to tell the world that I did what I did not for reasons of hate. I hated no one. I knew I was sick or evil or both. Now I believe I was sick. The doctors have told me about my sickness and now I have some peace. I know how much harm I have caused. I tried to do the best I could after the arrest to make amends, but no matter what I did, I could not undo the terrible harm I have caused. My attempt to help identify the remains was the best that I could do, and that was hardly anything. I feel so bad for what I did to those poor families, and I understand their rightful hate. I know I will be in prison for the rest of my life, I know that I will have to turn to God to help me get through each day. I should have stayed with God. I tried and failed and created a holocaust. Thank God there will be no more harm that I can do. I believe that only the Lord Jesus Christ can save me from my sins. I have instructed Mr. Boyle to end this matter. I do not want to contest the civil case. I've told Mr. Boyle to try and finalize them if he can. If there is ever any money, I want it to go to the victim's families. I've talked to Mr. Boyle about other things that might help ease my conscience in some way of coming up with ideas on how to make some amends to these families, and I will work with him on that. I want to return to Ohio and quickly end that matter so that I can put all of this behind me and then come right back here to do my sentence. I decided to go through this trial for a number of reasons. One of the reasons was to let the world know that these were not hate crimes. I wanted the world in Milwaukee, which I deeply hurt, to know the truth of what I did. I didn't want unanswered questions. All the questions have now been answered. I wanted to find out just what it was that caused me to be so bad and evil. But most of all, Mr. Boyle and I decided that maybe there was a way for us to tell the world that if there are people out there with these disorders, maybe they can get some help before they end up being hurt or hurting someone. I think the trial did that. I take all the blame for what I did. I hurt many people. The judge in my earlier case tried to help me and I refused his help and he got hurt by what I did. I hurt those policemen in the Conorac matter and I shall ever regret causing them to lose their jobs and I hope and pray that they can get their jobs back because I know they did their best and I just plain fooled them. For that, I am so sorry. I know I hurt my probation officer who was really trying to help me. I am so sorry for that and sorry for everyone else that I have hurt. I've hurt my mother and father and stepmother. I love them all so very much. I hope that they will find the same peace I am looking for. Mr. Boyle's associates, Wendy and Ellen, have been wonderful to me, helping me through this worst of all times. I want to publicly thank Mr. Boyle. He didn't need to take this case. I agree. But when I asked him to help me find the answers and to help others, if I could, he stayed, stayed with me and went way overboard in trying to help me. Mr. Boyle and I agreed that it was never a matter of trying to get off 
It was only a matter of which place I would be housed the rest of my life, not for my comfort, but for trying to study me in the hopes of helping me and learning to help others who might have problems. I know I will be in prison. I pledge to talk to doctors who might be able to find some answers. In closing, I just want to say that I hope God has forgiven me. Yeah, I want to just pause this again really quick, and I want to just give some context to everybody here in the chat. Look, you know, I understand that Idaho is a huge case right now. It's a topic of conversation. It's a lot of things that go on surrounding that case. Everybody has their own theories, opinions. Um, but you just, you can't, I can't do a entire channel about Idaho because when that case is settled, where do you go from there? You have to talk about other things. Now, I wanted to go back to Dahmer uh, this evening and just try, you know, some different things here. I know uh, Stephen Smith is now current and there's a lot of current cases that are coming up. We're probably going to talk about some of that, but I want to let you guys know, like I have to produce a show three nights a week. If I do all Idaho content, you guys are going to get bored with that. And we still have a long way to go until June and we have no idea what's going to happen. So, um, what I'm doing is, you know, I have to run a show, so I have to do different material. And like, like I said, people will come and go, uh, people will choose the topics that they want to watch and that's perfectly fine. Um, but you know, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going on with, uh, different shows. Uh, Christine's saying, let's see, Hey, Brian, can you do me a favor and run the game one more time before the end of the stream? I will forfeit my gift card. Okay, not a problem. Why don't we do that? We'll just do it right now. I appreciate you doing that. Um, let me, uh, okay, well, let's do this. I have another $10 gift card here. Uh, Christine's been nice enough to forfeit it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the deck of cards again. And again, the way the game is played is this. If you want to participate in the game, you have to give me an address somewhere where this needs to be sent. So if you don't want your address given to me, uh, please don't give me your address. Um, if you want to participate and uh, if you uh, if you want to participate, then you need to you know give me your address. What we'll do is I'll have you email me if you win. And then uh, I'll do a, a small verification. And then I just ask for your address and we'll get this sent out hopefully uh, tomorrow. So what I'm going to do is just kind of shuffle these up a little bit. I'm going to pull a card. And right when I start pulling a card, anybody that wants to participate can do so. Just start putting your uh, uh, pick cards in the chat. And then we'll keep going until we have a winner. All right, go. Nope, keep going. You want music? Here, we'll play a little music. <laughs> Still no winner. Nope, still no winner. Nope, still no winner. Nope, keep going. Nope, keep going. Stop, 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 We got a winner. We got a winner. We got a winner, 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 chicken dinner. Stop, 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 stop. I'm just going to go up and verify, and then I will let everybody know who won. Stop, 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 stop.
Okay, we have a winner. And the winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Do we have any of that type of music? <laughs> Maybe I do. Hang on. Oh, I do have I do have something I can play. And the winner is Oh, I just lost <laughs> I had it queued up and I freaking lost it. Hang on. <laughs> oh no. I was trying to time it perfect. All right. The winner is Oh shit. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's the Ten of Clubs. That was Candy. I was going to try to pull it up on the screen, but Candy got it. Ten of Clubs. Congratulations. Great job. I totally screwed that up. I was trying to time the sound at the same time. But congratulations. Uh, can you just email me? And we'll get you verified. Opinionated idiot at gmail.com. The opinionated idiot at gmail.com. And we'll get this Target gift card off to you. Um, all right, let's keep playing through this. We got a couple more minutes to the show, and then we're going to wrap this puppy up. And we'll be back on Thursday with more Idaho because that's everybody who wants to watch Idaho, Idaho, Idaho. Me. I know society will never be able to forgive me. I know the families of the victims will never be able to forgive me for what I have done. I promise I will pray each day to ask for their forgiveness when the hurt goes away, if ever. I have seen their tears. What, it's your birthday? I give my life right now to bring their loved ones back. Is it really your birthday? Did you just say it was your birthday? Everybody's got birthdays coming up. Hootaho, yeah, Idaho. <laughs> uh... Is it really your birthday? Oh, there's a lot to talk about. Believe me, uh, on my last video, there's been a lot of comments. So we're going to bring all those up. I'm going to not, well, they're public comments. So maybe we'll just pull the public comments up because everybody's written on there. It's public, um, but we'll pull those up. Um, and we're going to go through all that on Thursday. So we got a lot to talk about in Idaho on Thursday. Back, I would do it. I am so very sorry. Your Honor, I know that you are about to sentence me. I ask for no consideration. I want you to know that I have been treated perfectly by the deputies who have been in your court and the deputies who work the jail. The deputies have treated oh, me very me. professionally, and I want everyone to know that. They, they have not given me special treatment. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into yes, the world to save sinners, of who I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive an eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. I know my time in prison will be terrible, but I deserve whatever I get because of what I have done. I don't think so. Thank you, Your Honor, and I am prepared for your sentence, which I know will be the maximum. I ask for no consideration. I think he knew that. I think he knew he was just completely caught. I think he's he he is more upset that he got caught because if you go back to the interview, the first interview that I play with Inside Edition, uh, and I forget her name. But she asked him, would you keep, would you be still doing this if you didn't get caught? He said, absolutely. So he's pissed that he got caught. And I think that he's just kind of running through the motions and he knows that he's completely defeated at this time. There's nowhere else to go. His impending doom is now life in prison. So um, that's how I kind of feel about it. There is nothing else in the defense relative to you. Better, thank you. It now becomes the duty of the court to impose sentence in this case. And one of my obligations to set forth on the record the basis we for the sentence that. imposed. We can do that. In doing that, I'm required to consider the seriousness of the offenses. Sure, we can do that. We can... Uh... I think that's a good idea. Maybe we'll do like Tuesday nights or something like that. We'll do Tuesday night serial killer night or something like that. And I can start a series 
Um, and we'll just do a little kind of go back in time and look at those cases. We'll try to dig up as much video footage about that. That's a really good, um, that's a good idea. Thank you. If you guys want that kind needs of content, the community for that. protection from the defendant. I'm, you know, I just want to make it, I want to make it open here that I'm here to serve you guys. I, I don't want to do content that you're not interested in. So if those are things that you like and you want me to do here, we can do that. I want to entertain you. I don't want to just do something that I feel is entertaining. I want to make sure that you guys are into that. So if you guys want to do like serial killer Tuesdays, we can do that and look at some past serial killers and we'll make a series out of it. I think that's a really great idea. If you like that content, we'll do that and we'll come in and we'll talk about it and we'll kind of do this free open platform like that. I think that's a fantastic idea. Yeah, we can do missing persons. Absolutely. You can do anything that you guys are interested in because I want to serve you as my subscribers. I don't want to do stuff here that you don't want to talk about. Um, and, and I don't want to do things here if you're not interested in it. Um, but I think that's a really, really great idea. So we'll, we'll start a series like Ser Serial Killer Tuesdays, a little weird name, uh, but we'll, we'll do that. And I think it'd be a great, great idea. I think uh, Wild Cherry came up with a fantastic idea. If this is something that you guys are interested in, and then just let me know. If you're getting bored of it, let me know and we'll, we'll move on and do something else. But that's really, that's really cool. It's a great idea. Great idea. As Thank well you. as the needs yeah, write that of down. the defendant. In doing this, there are some observations that I would like to make. All right. Real quick, I'm just going to recognize Wild Cherry has become a new member of the opinionated idiot um, army. Let's give her the time. I got you, homie. All right. Thank you so much for becoming a member and supporting the channel. Did I miss someone else? We have Victor. Is it Victorine? I think I said it right. Victorine has become a supporting member of the channel. I got you, homie. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. It means a lot. It helps out a lot. Thank you so much. I appreciate everything that you guys do. Let's hear a little bit more of the sentencing. And then we'll move you on. Know, and I love this. Spent three weeks serial listening. Serial killer Tuesday. And now it's my time to say a few things. Uh, one of the things is that real people have been involved in this case and have been af affected by it. I thought, you know, the first family statement that I got, which went down and, and said a little bit about the feelings of each of the family members, I, I think conveyed that, that it's real people that are, have been affected by the crimes that have been committed here. Uh, and that doesn't go to just one family, it goes to all the families. But I thought that one was particularly stood out in my mind with the way, uh, with the way it was done. Uh, However, the victim's families are not the only real people involved in this case. Uh, there's the defendant's family. And, you know, this is a court that handles criminal matters on a regular basis. Right now, we're designated as a violent crime court, so it's not unusual for us to see not just the families of victims, but also the families of defendant. And you know, time and time again, you see a situation where the defendant comes from a good family, but committed a horrible crime. We must sentence the defendant for committing that crime knowing full well that the families of the family of the defendant will also be adversely affected and perhaps did nothing for which they should be hurt any more than the victims families did anything for which they should be hurt i 
a number of you have heard me use the expression before, I wish I had that magic button that I could put back, things back in place. But I don't have the power to bring people back to life. You know, that's in the hands of somebody else. Uh, I can't change what's happened. What I have to do is acknowledge the facts as they are and proceed to a meaningful sentence. We heard a great deal of talk in this case about mental disease. The jury found that a mental disease did not exist. I think correctly so. What I noticed is that many of the participants, including both lawyers, had difficulty using mental disease as a term separate from mental illness. Many times those terms were, I think, unconsciously used interchangeably. Mental disease is... This is very interesting. This, this, you know, what the judge is talking about here is very, very interesting. A word of art, a legal word of art, defined in the statute book. Some mental conditions or mental illness, by definition, do not constitute a mental disease. And had it become necessary for the court to rule, it would be the ruling of this court that a paraphilia, as a matter of definition, is not a mental disease, as that term is defined in our statute. One of the things that was particularly significant to me when we had our psychiatric and psychological experts on the stand and they were talking about, was it DSM-3R, the thick book that we had, was that when this term paraphilia was coined, it was coined to replace sexual deviant. And it was done so because they were carving out from the definition homosexuality, because there had been a change in public attitude in regard to that, that particular situation. It seems to me that in doing so, what the, what the people defining the term were trying to do, not necessarily they were trying to conform to Wisconsin law, but they were trying to create a term that fits that exception that we have in our statute, which says that an abnormality manifested only by repeated criminal or otherwise antisocial conduct does not constitute a mental disease. Hmm. You see, what the statute's doing is taking some things that constitute a mental condition and say, as we use the term mental disease, that's not included, included within that language. A little different how we look at things now, huh? <laughs> I say that because I think I owe it to my profession, having heard all the testimony that I've heard, to set forth on the record what my views are as, as far as that particular situation is concerned, it never became necessary for me specifically to rule on it. Quick question for you. Ah. Did you know you should have a healthy bowel movement at least once every single day? Thank you for telling According me According to the Mayo Clinic. Uh, <coughs> as to the seriousness of the offense, I've listened to the testimony the way everybody else has listened to the testimony, the way our 14 jurors listened to the uh, testimony. And I, too, have a view of what's going on or what was going on as far as Mr. Dahmer is concerned. First of all, every witness that examined him told us he was an intelligent man, probably superior intelligence. Uh, I agreed that he used that intelligence to man manipulate people. I don't think there's any question about it. I believe what we had was a homosexual who could not accept the fact that he was a homosexual. Uh, that he from time to time involved himself in homosexual activities and there was never a problem in a situation that he could walk away from and remain, in effect, anonymous. 
But once he brought somebody to his home. I just want to address this comment. So it says, still shocked that you know who converges, Brian. Uh, Overcast was a local band. I grew up with uh, Kingpin. Fugazi was at the Worcester Artist Group. One of my favorite shows, Shelter is Great Live too. Yep. So I, I knew all of those bands. I played with all of those bands. I first used to see Brian when Brian's hair was just starting to get dreaded here. And we used to go watch them play in front of like 30 people. So I know uh, I played I played in and around the Boston and Providence scene for a very long time, all up and through the 90s. I actually talked about this on my last stream. Um, uh, Aaron Dalbic, uh, I've hung out with him numerous, numerous of times. Jake, uh, numerous, numerous. I mean, this is all back in the day. I mean, they're they're you know they were friends of mine then, but we've all you know moved on. So I know all those guys. Kurt, I know all those guys. Um, I think for I want to remember that Aaron played guitar in a small band that we tried getting together like a side project one time because I played guitar um, and uh, I think way, way back then, if I remember, I think he came to a couple of practices and we tried getting something going with him. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Miss those days. Uh, 56. Let's see. Let's keep playing through this. But yeah, I, I have, uh, I can show you pictures and, you know, all the old records and stuff. I still have all that stuff. So he could no longer remain anonymous. And therefore he was caught. <clears throat> it's one way to avoid that destroy the evidence. That's all right. A vicious way to destroy no the evidence. But that's my view of what was going on. Uh, in terms of what happened to these people, gosh, I was horrified. You know, when we asked the questions in jury selection about, uh, you know, how you react to some of these things, uh, fortunately, nobody gets to ask the judge that question. Uh, nobody gets to ask the judge how you feel about uh, about horror movies, because I'll tell you what I do. I turn them off. Uh, that That's one of the powers that you have when you control the television set. Uh, uh, I I have to disagree. When I see a horror movie, I keep it on. So I have to disagree. I can Sorry. go into other things in my background. That, uh, well, let's talk about it. I uh, There's a time in my life that I made a living in a packing house. And I was a little squeamish in terms of, uh, of dealing with animals. Uh, gosh knows I gotta be squeamish when we talk about doing some of those same things to human beings, real people. I saw Dr. Fosdale on the witness stand. Here's a physician. I don't know if any of you noticed it, but I noticed it, that he got very, very uncomfortable when he was talking about what was done to these human beings. <clears throat> People are looking to me to provide a measure of protection to the community, and I don't think there's only one way that that protection can be provided and that is to see that this defendant never again has the opportunity to walk the streets of our community as a free man. <clears throat> you know, that really, that's part of judicial discretion, I guess, but it really, in this case, doesn't require a whole lot of discretion. I can't imagine I agree. anybody else coming up with any other conclusion. And I think that's been acknowledged by both the defense attorney and the defendant himself. As to treatment, the needs of the defendant, that's something in what the court does in sentencing that's not within the discretion of the court, but it- Sylvia, I got stories for days. Is within the discretion of the institution <laughs> where he will be going. As I listened to the parade of psychiatric and psychological experts 
I didn't hear anybody say that he was a totally normal individual. Oh, yeah. Oh, we wow. got a commercial. Hey, look. Can you explain What an odd thing? commercial. So this is... I think the opinion is uni universal that he has some significant problems and if he can benefit or society can be benefit from treatment or study, I think that should have should happen within the the institutional system and there's no reason why it can't. Mr. Dahmer in reference to religion. Sylvia, I got a surprise for you after this. Hang on. Anybody have any idea how many defendants find religion when they come before this court for sentencing? Do they uh -oh, sincerely find it? To set me up. I don't know. How do I determine that? Some of them keep that newfound sense of religion all the way till that door over there. Some keep it a lot longer. You know, that's something between God and Mr. Dahmer. And if indeed he's found religion, I hope that he keeps it and I hope it helps him for the rest of his life, which is going to be spent in one of our penal institutions. Now, Mr. McCann, is it the first two counts on which there's a habitual, uh, I don't have the complaint in front of me. I, uh, is, that, is that correct? <laughs> It actually attaches to all the Your Honor. All, count, all yeah. counts, all but only the first two. I, no, it attaches to all 15. I addressed specifically okay. the first two because that would add 10 years to what would be the, the minimum parole release. And on the others, I have the discretion. It does. It's under the oh, my God, you're right. It does. Court, clearly, it does. he falls within the habitual criminality statute, and the court makes that finding. As to <coughs> count one. Okay, so we're going to get all the, 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 the sentencing now. We're going to hear the 999 years. The court will impose the mandatory life sentence plus an additional 10 years on the habitual criminality. Count two, life imprisonment plus 10 years consecutive to count one. Count three, life imprisonment with the date of parole eligibility, 70 years from the inception of that particular sentence. I don't have all the numbers that I can't work it out, but it'll be 70 years from the beginning of that sentence, which will be consecutive uh, to count two, count four, life imprisonment with a parole eligibility to be 70 years from the commencement of that sentence consecutive. Where am I at on the numbers? Somebody guessed it. Yeah, the numbers. There's so many numbers. What, ben Reporter, what was the last? I, I should check this off on here. So I... Last four, four the thing is, they have to read this because it's it's the law. You know, he's handing a sentence down, so he has to read this. Last one, okay. Count five, life imprisonment, parole eligibility to be 70 years after. So I do not, uh, hang on. I don't have a Facebook page for my channel, and I'll tell you why. Because when you do a Facebook page, um, I have to look into it, but it will essentially dox all of my personal information. I think there's a way that I can set up a professional one, but you have to pay for it. And um, I just don't have the funding for that right now. So, uh, you know, the best way to do this is to uh, communicate through, you know, just through my my YouTube page. And as the channel grows, we'll, we'll get more into looking into other uh, forms of uh, communication. You know, I have a, I've set up a chat on Telegram but the channel's just not really big enough yet. Um, but, you know, once it starts to build, we'll start implementing some of those, you know, chat, or maybe I'll, I'll look to do um, a business page for the, the Facebook. So um, let's keep playing through. We'll finish this up. For the inception of that sentence to be consecutive to count four, count six, uh, 
life imprisonment with parole eligibility to be 70 years after the inception of that sentence to be con uh, consecutive to count five, count seven, life imprisonment with parole eligibility to be 70 years after the inception of that sentence to be consecutive to count six, count eight, life imprisonment with parole eligibility to be 70 wow. years after the inception of that sentence to be consecutive to count seven, count nine, life imprisonment with parole eligibility to be uh, 70 years after the inception of that sentence to be consecutive to count eight, count 10, uh, <clears throat> life imprisonment uh, with parole eligibility to be 70 years after the uh, inception of that sentence wow. to be consecutive to count nine, count 11, life imprisonment uh, with parole eligibility to be 70 years after the inception of that uh, sentence to be consecutive to count 10, count 12, life imprisonment with parole eligibility to be 70 years after the inception of that sentence to be consecutive wow. to count 11, uh, count 13, life imprisonment with uh, pro parole eligibility to be 70 years after the inception of that sentence to wow. be consecutive to count 12, count 14, life imprisonment with uh, parole eligibility to be 70 years after the inception of that sentence uh, to be uh, consecutive to count 13, count 15, uh, life imprisonment with parole eligibility to be 70 years after the inception of that sentence to be consecutive to count 14. I, a long I have, believe I have and I intended to follow the recommendation of the state. I, I could have said something different which would have had the same impact. I really yeah, easy. see good one. Nobody gains anything by just to say more and more years. But the important point is that the sentence is structured in such a way that this defendant will never again see freedom. That is owed to this community in order to protect the community as well as acknowledgement so of the seriousness of the offenses. Those are the reasons the sentence, of course, is to the state prison system. Uh, I, one thing I didn't provide, all of these sentences are consecutive to the time he's presently serving. Uh, there are appellate rights. Mr. Boyle, you'll be reviewing with your client his appellate rights. I'd like to indicate to the court that they will be signed in proper form. The part that will be checked as required is that he is undecided. It's only to preserve the, the right to move it along the proper way. The final decision will be made within 20 days after we had let some settlement here. I don't anticipate there will be an appeal. I only say that because that's what my client wanted me to say, but I still want deliberation on that decision, uh, and, uh, and, I, and I want to make that a part of the record. Lastly, Your Honor, I am required to ask the court on the record for a 10-minute contact visit with his mother, stepmother and father, and I would ask if the court would grant that. Are they present? Uh, they're in the so hallway. I, I didn't know they, they were. They're present in the building. Is I, I understand they are. I have not seen Any them. objection to them, Mr. Chairman? Oh, no, I joined at the request. So ordered. Thank you, Your Honor. Hey, let me meet with this. Anything further for the court? No. No, so please report. Wow. Court's in recess. Good. He will go away. Well, he did go away for the rest of his life. Only made it about, <laughs> only made it about three months in prison before he was killed. Um, I wanted to show if, if Sylvia is still here. Are you still here, Sylvia? Let me know in the chat. I want to pull something up for you. Uh, Steven, it's all right, buddy. You can watch the replay. I'll be back on Thursday night. Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday nights, guys, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hit that bell notification so you get notified. Uh, is Sylvia still here? Let me see before I end this up. It's good to see you, Steve. Uh, but I want to show her something before I end the stream. So did you guys like the the content tonight? We'll, we'll stick to our theme, Serial Killer Tuesdays. Um, we'll do that going, going ahead. All right, Sylvia's still here. I got to just pull this up. I'm going to trip her out right now. I'm just going to make sure my information is not doxxed. Okay. There you go, Sylvia. Here's me and uh, my wild glory. 
look at the got my overcast t-shirt on so i was there i was there and i did it <laughs> i was in it <laughs> all right awesome candy glad you got that email and we'll take care of it if i get um I get to it tonight. I'll once I get offline, I'll I'll email you. Have you do something? We'll we'll, we'll vet you, and then uh, I was, uh, she says I'm probably in the crowd. Probably. <laughs> uh, let me see what else I got. I just want to show Sylvia a couple of pictures because her and I were in the same scene together. Um, let me just pull this down and pull something else up. Here's another one of me. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm not, yeah, all right. I'm not doxing my information. Here's me again right here. Look at that young face. Jeez, man, I was so young back in the day. <laughs> uh, that's great. It was fun times. I had hair too. Look at it. I had hair. How fun is that? I had hair back then. Jeez, man. Ah, uh, no wrinkles. I had hair. <laughs> Skinny. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can find one more. I'll, I'll give give Sylvia a treat here. See what else I got. Hang on. Ah, oh, boy. Uh, oh, here we go. Sylvia probably remembers these. Uh... <laughs> Here we go. I got one more. <laughs> Look at the hair. <laughs> oh, Look at the hair. It's so great. <laughs> Listen, the way that I look at it, if you are if you are going bald, guys. Shave your fucking head, own up to it, be confident. Girls are going to like you for your personality, not your fucking hair. So, yeah, frosted blonde. That was the whole thing back then, remember? Bleaching your hair. Remember? Bleaching, 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 bleaching. Bleaching your hair was the big, it was a big thing back then. <laughs> uh, what is, yeah, no beard. Yeah. Cere Everybody likes Serial Killer Tuesday. Cool. We're going to do those going forward. I've had enough embarrassing myself showing my old self. Let's let's do a subscriber check count. Hang on. And we'll update the big board before we get off air. Where are we at? How many? We're almost at 2,900. We're at 2,890 right now, guys. 2,890. Let me see if I can update the board before we go off air. We're almost close to 3,000. Pretty close. We're getting there. My goal is by June... 5,000 by the end of the year, 10,000. And we're going to do this, but I just need your help to continue. We're going to update the big board. You know, I love doing the big board. We're so close. Which is it? Can I get the face close to the camera? <laughs> she says I had bleach hair too. Fun show. I'll be back Tuesday, Thursday. Awesome. Uh, Boomer saying, thank you for an awesome show. Much love from North Carolina. I love North Carolina. I want to move there. Uh, it was fun. It was a fun show. Channel's growing. Yes, it is. It's growing because of you guys. It's growing because of you guys. You guys make the channel go. So Serial Killer Tuesdays, we're going to keep with that theme. Thursday, I will be back. We're going to do Idaho again. I know if I do Idaho on Thursday, it's going to be 200 people back in the chat again. We'll get this going. Um, look, I had an awesome fun show tonight almost to 3000 i know it's it's all of you guys you guys make this happen amber's got a quick question hey brian quick question do you think that he wanted to be put in general population is easy way out because he knew people would attack him um possibly possibly that's a good question i don't know you know again those are those are the little things that we probably will never know i think that at that point Looking at it, he just knew that he was completely defeated. He had been caught. There's no way to continue with his obsessions and his uh, his his killings, his bloodthirst, 
And I think at that point, he was just completely defeated and gave up. As much as he had that impact statement, I think it was complete bullshit. I think he just wanted to say things that people wanted to hear to appease them. But I think deep, deep down inside, he was just completely defeated and wanted a way out. So um, that's going to be it. Let's see. I meant that the old intro. I'm not weird. Yeah, I stopped doing that because I got some shit about it. Because, you know, we're talking about some really serious subjects here. And uh, to be kind of laughing and smiling in an intro, it's just, it's not appropriate. Um, but I will have a bomb ass live show intro soon. But I'm going to keep with the, um, the other small clip intro that I have. And then I'm going to have the same guy that's working on my long intro do a small intro for me. So, okay, guys, we're going to end this. It's getting late. I have one more day, one more free day tomorrow before I go back to work. I go back to work on Thursday, but we'll go back to the regular schedule. Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come join us. I'll be back on Thursday. Good night, everybody. It's been fantastic. I love all you guys. Be safe. I'll see you on Thursday night. Let me hit the outro right about now. <laughs>thank you for checking out this video if you like the content here today make sure to click on one of these videos up here i would appreciate it and before you head out make sure to like share and subscribe turn on that bell notification so every time i drop a new video or go live you guys will know thanks